side of the United States, the Western Michigan Broncos come to Toronto, bringing the pain, led by MAC Defensive Player of the Year, Amir Ismail. The 11th ranked team in the nation in defense seeks their first ever bowl win. Coming off of one of the toughest schedules in all of college football, the Cincinnati Bearcats are led by new head coach Brian Kelly. Kelly takes charge of a team that upset Rutgers and challenged every game. It's the Broncos and the Bearcats from one of the greatest cities in North America. The International Bowl from Toronto, Ontario, Canada kicks off next. First time since 1937, a bull game will be held outside of the borders of the United States. Last time, it was in Cuba. This time, we move north of the border to Toronto, Ontario, Canada, where the Western Michigan Broncos will take on the Cincinnati Bearcats. Welcome, everybody, and I have to say, welcome to my hometown of Toronto, Ontario. Doug Flutie, it's like a second hometown for him. Craig James, we've adopted him, so it's like a third <laughs> hometown for him. I also happened to go to the West Michigan University, but when I was there, not a proud tradition in football. That's changed now. And it's changed because of one guy, Bill Cubic. Bill's taken this program from a 1-10 team before he got there, 15-8 and eight over the last two years, 8-4 and four this year. He's done it with character-type kids that play this game with a passion. They play smart football, and he does it with an aggressive style of defense, a blitzing defense. Led by well, their weak side linebacker, Amir, Amir Ishmael, 17 sacks this season leads the NCAA. You know what, and a guy that's going to have to deal with him today, Brian Kelly, is the new head football coach at Cincinnati. Well, when Brian was at his old place, Central Michigan, he had to play against Western Michigan, so he knows very well what to expect from this Western Michigan football team. This is going to be a game that's all about defense. It's really defensive. Both teams play outstanding defense. They're glad to be here. They're excited to be playing in John's hometown against John's old alma mater. They'll be ready for your Broncos. Exactly. Canadians, it's their first taste of what U.S. college football is all about. And those that are here are very fired up. And you can bet Cincinnati and Western Michigan are proud to be here in Toronto at the International Bowl. Today's game is being broadcast on ESPN2 HD, presented by Olivia. Here's a look at the CN Tower. You can see low-lying clouds have moved in. Western Michigan wins the toss. They defer to Cincinnati to receive. And let's check down with the fourth member of our team, Todd Harris. All right, thank you very much, John, and welcome home. Well, this is the final game for Western Michigan senior quarterback Ryan Cubitt. He is the son of head coach Bill Cubitt, and it has been a long, painful season for him. Since he began playing football, he has gone through seven surgical procedures, all of them football-related except for one when he had his tonsils removed. But the season has ended on a high note. He got engaged on Christmas Day, and his football team is playing their first bowl game since 1988. I mentioned to him, hey, you're just like that Steve Austin guy, the $6 million man, to which he responded. Who's that? Speaking of age differences, we'll talk about Ryan Cubitt a little later on the show and tell you about his legendary run-in with a true legend at quarterback. John? Todd, thanks a lot. Well, if he doesn't know who the $6 million man is, now that he's engaged, he's been about to find out. <laughs> <laughs> This is an exciting venue. It'll take a while to build up a crowd here in Toronto, but those that are here, there's a large following of college football across the border here in Canada. National Football League as well. As we look at the roof of the Rogers Center, originally called Skydome, and we were here. Boys, can you believe January the 6th we're doing a ball game? Toronto. In T.O., baby. T.O. And we are underway as well. Dominic Goodman with the ball. Oh, he gets hit hard at about the 19-yard line. Gain of 18 after the kick. 
very important for Western Michigan to come out and make a statement. This is a statement game for them. The MAC against the Big East, and, 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 and you know we'll talk about the Big East and how successful they've been, Doug, throughout the bowl season. <laughs> they've had an unbelievable bowl season, 4-0 going into this game. And I'll tell you what, they played some great football, and Cincinnati had a huge upset over Rutgers towards the end of the season. So they've played with the big boys all year long. Yeah, but it comes down to defense, Ken. The Broncos defense deal with that big Cincinnati offensive line and running game. And they are a blitzing defense. Snap back and quickly thrown out by Virtua. Dominic Goodman. Big My name is Brent Selleck, tight end for the University of Cincinnati, and I'm here to introduce our offense. Anchoring the O-line is Jeff Reinstaller and big ghetto Frank Straub. At the wide receiver position, we got the leader, Bill Polin, along with Derek Stewart and Dominic Goodman. At running back, we got Greg Moore, and at quarterback, we got big Nick Davila. Davila's pass that time was dropped. If they pick up the first first down. We already see the Brian Kelly influence on this offense going no huddle. They're working with the old Cincinnati terminology with Brian Kelly's flair. He loves to spread it out. Cincinnati has been a team that's too bad. Well, they're an up-tempo team, no huddle, move the ball down the field, put pressure on the defense. Davila with a handoff in the backfield to Moore. Fights his way. Let's take a look now at the defense. Hi, I'm Matt Ludeman, defensive end for the Western Michigan Broncos. Our starting lineup is Zach Davidson on the other side, Z Money. Shake and bake on the inside with Nick Farcatapane and Corey Flom. And then for our linebackers, we have Paul Tiedhoff with the club, Dustin Duclo, and Amir Ishmael, the Egyptian magician. Our defensive backfield is London Fryer, C.J. Wilson, the Haitian sensation, Louis Delmas, and E.J. Two-Way Biggers. Cincinnati likes to work in a hurry. Davila throws it out in the flat. Picked up by Bill Poland. He fights his way towards the first down marker, five yards on the game. You know, one thing that we will see from Western Michigan is a solid tackling football team. They don't make mistakes. They don't make, miss tackles. They play downhill, gamble a little bit times, though. Yeah, gambling-wise, they bring the blitz. They blitz on every down that time. They're smart defense. They know their responsibilities. They're in the right place. Brian Steele is the punter. Chapel is back to receive the Queen. kick. Runs to his right. She's going to let it drop and go out of bounds. Looks at about the 17-yard line or so. Let's take a look at the Western Michigan offensive lineup. Hi, my name is James Blair. Right tackle for Western Michigan. Today I'm here to introduce the offensive line. At left tackle, we have Andrew Freddy Kugelawi. At left guard, we have Dom Papa Moran. And at the center, we have Robbie Main Event Quatilla. At right guard, we have Moto, Mr. Matt Williams. And at right tackle, we have me, James Blair, and the backs and the receivers. All right. Hello, as always says, the backs and the receivers. <laughs> Toss out to Simmons quickly. <laughs> It's been great, though, watching this this player lineup with them introducing oh. themselves has been really special. Yes. Oh, yeah. we've had fun with the kids. And I'll tell you what, James got to calm down a little. He's a little too excited about putting that lineup. <laughs> but we did. We had a blast down with the with the Houston players. Uh, Aldridge was amazing. And I'll tell you what, we, it's fun getting out and meeting the players. <laughs> It's pressure on them, too. Oh, a lot of pressure. Trying to introduce them. Remember the teammates' names? Their nicknames? Z-Money and the Egyptian <laughs> Whipchin. <and Let's> <laughs> Cubit. Runs out of time. Anthony Hope gets in there. And, you know, Cubit has said, don't make mistakes. Off the side, you see a lot of pressure that's coming. Only two receivers in the routes. He didn't have options. You know, uh, the Cincinnati safeties play real low. They're, every route is going to be contested. Everyone matches up underneath, even though it's supposedly a zone coverage. But there, there's a lot of pressure on their corners, and their corners do have a lot of speed. How about Doug? He's gone from calling everything one, three, five, seven zones. And this, <laughs> it's just like it's man and it's zone. Oh, there you go. Right, you you know, coming I'll off. simplify. He's I'll simplify. It down. Cubic quick toss out of the backfield. Ball is up, oh, and it is picked off, and that's going to be a Cincinnati touchdown. Antoine Horton. Off the deflected ball right into his hands. Rather, John Bowie was the one who took it in. 
You know, all, all the Cincinnati coaches have been talking about how Bowie has great ball skills in the air. He reacts to the ball well, as, as well as being a track guy with amazing speed. Ball should have been caught. Simmons bobbles the ball, pops up in the air, six the other way. I'll tell you, not the way you want to start for Western Michigan. 25 yards. That's his second interception of the year for Bowie. Yes, a tough start for the Broncos. They fall down by six, seven, pending the point after. Kevin Lavelle, kick is up, and it's good. Well, the defenses strike quickly in this one. Western Michigan holds, and then Cincinnati takes advantage of a bobble, takes it in for six. You guys run the double team a lot, right? Join us in March for ESPN The Weekend at the Walt Disney World Resort. Book your trip online today. For many years, the world's tallest freestanding structure. I think there's one that is bigger in Asia right now, but it shadows the Sky Dome. We'll take a look. And right now, we have a 7-0 game. The Big East has been adopted by Doug Flutie, Craig. <laughs> And Doug Flutie's conference is unbeaten right now. I was asked which conference had the best opportunity in the bowls to go for this championship. So I jumped on the bandwagon with the Big East because they had some good matchups and had some opportunities. Well, I got lucky. The Big East got lucky with some good matchups. And they played well. Good conference. Brandon West chases the ball into the end zone. You know that CN Tower, John? Yes. They got a glass floor. Yeah, I've been there. Have you walked on the glass I've, floor? I've laid on the glass floor. <laughs> it's scary. I can't, it's hard to make myself. Do. I, I, I put a foot out there. <laughs> it's like just to step out there and look through and see the ground. No. Yeah, it is scary. No, thank you. Was that voluntarily laying down or just... Uh, <laughs> well, there was a party up there one night. That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that uh, they tell you it'll take 60 elephants will be able to stand on that floor and not go through. I don't so. think you can get 60 elephants in the room. Not in that ele elevator, I don't think. Cubic behind center. Hands the ball off to West. Picks up two yards. Got you two. Right here, two. There's a flag on the play. Offside. Number 56 on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Very important for Western Michigan to be able to run the football. And, and watching, studying film on this football team, they seem late to the hole a lot. But I do like West on his feet. He gets there a little quicker. He's got great quickness. He's a great change-up back for him. He's starting today, and he is one of those breakaway-type guys. Two men in the backfield this time. He'll be looking to go deep, but he overshoots his man. Meant for Keith Schultz. It wasn't close to him. Cincinnati defenders on the outside are one-on-one -on -one all over the field. There, there are going to be some opportunities for Western Michigan to throw the ball down the field and make big plays. But, you know, in, in studying Cubit when he throws the football, sometimes he throw, he's throwing it to an area as opposed to just throwing it to the guy. They do a lot better throwing the crossing underneath routes. We'll talk about more about that in a minute. It's interesting. Some of the viewers out there talking about throwing to an area instead of to an individual. Hand off underneath. And West takes it, picks up three yards. Right now, let's look at Cincinnati's defense. Hi, my name is Haruki Nakamura, the starting free safety of the University of Cincinnati defense. Our starting D line consists of first team uh, All Big East, Terrell Bird, the Birdman. Our linebackers are Leo Morgan, the Jamaican assassin, Kevin McCullough, Simba and uh, smooth Corey Smith and our secondary the dogs of the defense led by seniors John Bowie the fastest man in the Big East the X-Factor Dominic Ross and our lockdown corner Mike Mickens with third down and about three yards to go Cubit tosses out towards the sideline and finds Herb Martin he's going to get a first down before being brought down by Leo Morgan that's kind of the route that I was talking about. The underneath patterns are, ju he's just a lot more confident. He really throws it to his target. And mostly they run that little crosser underneath in the middle. But that right there uh, with uh, Herb, 
Number seven. Herbivore Martin. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Herbaceous. He is fast. He's flat out fast. He He's their deep threat. He's the guy that can fly down is the field. Is he flat or is he out or is he just flat out? Flat fast? out. Flat out fast. Hewitt underneath the center. Hands it off. West. A nice job to break the first tackle and pick up two in what would have been a loss. You know, Mark Bonds is their original starting tailback, and uh, he was disciplined this week, and he's sitting back and, and not starting today, and West is taking control. He, he's got quick feet. He's going to make some people miss. Second and about eight for the Broncos. Cuban with West behind him. Two wide receivers. Cincinnati shows that they're coming, but they don't. The hand on quickly. Brian Kelly has inherited a good program, a great situation. This is a team that has a defense that has really shown progress. you got to win with defense, Doug, and look what they've done from 05 to 06. And, you know, that, that all plays into what Cincinnati has done. They, they play good defense. They don't kill themselves on offense. They ball control on the other side, and they play these close ball games, and they're a physical football team. Third down, four yards out. Hubert. Flushed out of the pocket momentarily had a man wide open, Brandon Ledbetter, but just overshot him. Totally uncovered. Play action will give this defense fits. You can see on the left side of the screen, an under route makes the safety jump, and they switch it off and lose a receiver in the open, and the tight end goes running down the boundary all by himself. Cuban will throw the ball deep, but he just doesn't seem to be throwing it at the guy. He just does not have the accuracy that he has on the crossing and underneath. Yeah, he's one of these guys that is a, he manages the game. He gets him in and out of the right plays, makes good decisions. Not an explosive quarterback. Blameless punt to Chapel. Takes it across the 30, breaks that, and makes it out over the 35-yard line. Right now, Cincinnati has the only points on the board. They've done by defense, leading Western 7 to nothing. ESPN2 College Football, the International Bowl, is brought to you by Nissan, who invites you to shift the way you move through the world and new Gillette Fusion or Gillette Fusion Power for the best shape ever in manual and battery power. Visit GilletteFusion.com for details. You saw the streetcars going by. Toronto, one of the few remaining cities in North America that uses electric power for their public transit above the ground. And that building you're looking at is the old city hall. Dabble in a quarterback. Gives it to Moore. Fights his way, strong running to get it out near the 50 before C.J. Wilson is there to get him. Strong running between the tackles. Cincinnati doesn't have a featured running back, but they are a tackle to tackle, methodical, grind it out, control the clock, powerful football team. Western Michigan is going to have to get low and penetrate. 13-yard gain there. Another handoff to Moore. You know, we started the season with Brian Kelly as the head coach at Central Michigan. <laughs> We're ending the season with him, the head coach, at Cincinnati. We wondered why he wanted to make the move to the Big East. It's also the Big East. Uh, the Big East is a great conference. I think we look at Bobby Petrino, Rich Rodriguez, Greg Schiano. Uh, Greg Robinson's got a couple of Super Bowl rings as well at uh, Syracuse and Randy Etzel. It's a great conference. I think the energy here with the University of Cincinnati and the recruiting base made it a good decision for me. A good decision for his quarterback, Davila, finds Dominic Goodman, and he picks up 19 yards, so Cincinnati moves the ball at will. That was a beautiful rhythm throw, a quick three-step drop, and he sticks the slant right on the money, gets him, hits him on the run. Nice footwork, nice release by the quarterback. Look at the slant inside, beats London Fletcher, the corner out there. That'd be London Fryer. 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 Come on now. London He's Fletcher. He's teammate. a linebacker. He's a linebacker. His dad's that's our Urban, teammate. Yes, that's Urban Fryer's son. Yeah. Dabble under center. Hand off to Moore. 
goes towards the sideline. Talked about an old teammate of yours, and his yeah. son being out there. Todd Harris has more on that. Yeah, you guys pointed out he's the son of NFL great Irving Fryer. He came to Western Michigan to play wideout like his dad, but he has since made the switch to DB, and the Broncos are happy because he's leading the Mac in interceptions. Now, he draws his motivation from his younger sister, Adrian, who has been through a lot. Four or five surgeries before the age of 10, one an open heart surgery. She has a rod placed in her back because of some other complications that came from that. He also has the name Noah written on his other wrist. That's his son. Wow. That is a tough start to your life. Oh, great, and that's going to be a touchdown for Cincinnati. Dominic Goodman, who broke the first tackle and then had clear sailing, 21 yards to the end zone. This really is a result of the strong running game, and Western Michigan playing so hard and tight up front that they lose their ability to make the tackle. fryer has got to come in, keep his head up, and make the tackle on that. No, no other way around it. Yeah. And, and their aggressive style of defense, they're blitzing there, they're leaving the corners one-on-one, -on -one. he's playing with some cushion, playing off, and it's the rhythm passing of Cincinnati that, that's burned them two plays in a row. And just for your benefit, he dove in the end zone as well. You know, <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do? You can't stop him. Laval up the extra point. Is in and good. And Brian Kelly's start as head coach at Cincinnati is off to a tremendous start. His Bearcats leading 14 to nothing here in the first quarter. Cincinnati off to a great start, a defensive touchdown, and then driving the field on their second possession, punching it in. Now with a 14-0 lead over the Broncos. Tom Saunders, Doug Flutie, Craig James, and Todd Harris with you here. The inaugural International Bowl played here in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Got it. West and Gebhardt are deep. And that ball's going to go through the end zone. Western Michigan is in Kalamazoo, which is about 100 miles west of Ann Arbor, where the University of Michigan is. Some of the famous alumni, Tim Allen, of course, have home improvement. Dave Dombrowski, who's the CEO of the Tigers, took them to the playoffs this year. Glenn Healy won a Stanley Cup with the New York Rangers in 1994. Neil Smith, another Western alumni, was the general manager of that team. You can also add to that list Luther Vandross and Jim Bow. There's a corner. Turns as quickly does West. Well, you know who else we can add to that list? Mr. John Saunders. What did you do over there at Western? I, I cleaned up. You cleaned the up. The locker room just a little while. Hey, oh. he's the hockey king. There he is. <laughs> and and I heard that you and your brother were the leading scoring duo of brothers yeah, in the history exactly of right. Western Michigan. <laughs> Wait a minute, but I also <laughs> heard that you know, that all-time scoring duo. Oh, oh my had lord! One point. Yeah. Your How many? A ball? I had one. One point. And Brady had two hundred and seventy-five. Way to hold your own there, John. <laughs> hey, I was a defenseman. Come on, <laughs> Simmons. Todd, Todd, you got some more on that Saunders family deal? We'll check in with Todd in a moment. Thanks, guys, for embarrassing me. You look good. Did you like the fro? Loved it. See, loved it. Looked like Fletch. The thing, I used it as a secret weapon because it, to get the helmet, <laughs> the helmet pulled on. Oh, could you imagine with the hockey <laughs> helmet? Oh. When I undid the snap, it, it was like a projectile. Thompson out of the backfield. You, you, look, you must have been a guy. I, I don't know her hockey terminology, but I bet you busted folks up against the glass. Well, that, that's it why. Forces. That's why the point total was very low. <laughs> Oh, man, I don't doubt you were, were smoking. Were you the official enforcer of the team? The stick was used. I, I believe the stick was not the butt invented. End of the, stick? the stick was not invented to move the hockey puck, but was invented to move the other team's player. There you go. <laughs> Through Thompson in the backfield. Oh, they just completely collapsed on Cuban. And he is sacked. 
Brought down by McCullough. Let's check it for Todd Harris. You guys, John's being way too modest. While Bernie Saunders had his fair share of goals, our John Saunders had his moments of limelight. I went through and dug through the archives, found some footage of John Saunders, and I think this might be his goal. Here it is. John Saunders <laughs> on a breakaway. <laughs> open netter. Don't. Oh, they oh, don't. Oh, are you kidding me? Come he on, did have a goal. John. Look at that. What kind of skating is that for a Bronco? John. 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 That could never have been me. <laughs> I would never have to puck that deep in the offensive zone. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Todd. <laughs> Big matters <laughs> hey, hey, you know what? I now understand, though, after looking at your hair, dude, the, uh -huh. and, the, and that look about you, that yeah. presence, why you have so many scars all over your body in <laughs> surgery. That's where I'd see the hand. Well, you were one of the Hansons, weren't you? Well, just about. Oh, yes, man. I played with them. I know. <laughs> there you go. That's our yeah. coach, Bill Neal, to my left. Neal Smith, who was the GM of the Rangers, and my brother, of course, who went on to play in the National Hockey League. Career so. goals. One. <laughs> Career <laughs> goals. I, 76 and one. That's why all the time that you and Bernie, when y'all take us to dinner, I always feel safe with you two guys. <laughs> no. You know you got to come a hockey player. Yeah. Benton passed up in the backfield. One yard he manages to pick up. Well, this Western defense got to pick it up now, make a statement here, get three and out, get the ball back, and make something happen. You know, the Broncos defense has faced talent before. Jarrett Wolf, the tremendous running back from Northern Illinois, this season they shut Wolf down. 18 carries, 25 yards. So they have the ability to stop a good runner. Benton in the backfield. Davila looks over to the sidelines. Changing things up here. Out of the shotgun. Looks to his left. Spun around. Has to run out to the right. Tucks it up and then takes his licks as he slides down towards the 30 in a two-yard game. Tomorrow at 8 Eastern on ESPN, our college football bowl game coverage continues. Coach Frank Sulich and the Ohio Bobcats take on Southern Miss and the Golden Eagles, led by freshman running back Damian Fletcher. The GMAC Bowl tomorrow at 8 Eastern, also available on ESPN High Definition. Babylon hands it off to Benton. Benton fights his way for what looks like a first down on a seven-yard pickup. Kind of a long handoff, don't you think? Yeah, you know, when it's in yeah. the air. Yeah, <laughs> when it's in the air. This Cincinnati football team, though, I'm telling you, they had a tough schedule this year. It's tremendously tough. They're a talented team. They were in all the games, even the ones that they lost. And, and so when you talk about Cincinnati and their future, Brian Kelly has a good opportunity. I mean, you can feel his influence right now. They're, they're going the no-huddle. It's up-tempo. And he's doing this because of terminology for himself and the kids and, and being able to communicate a little easier, just use the no-huddle. Benton takes the handoff in the backfield. He's fought back. He will not reach the line of scrimmage. Dunko was there to get him. Duclo, rather. A loss of four yards. Talk about Cincinnati and what they had to deal with this season. It was a very tough schedule. You look at their losses. I mean, they're playing over here. Ohio State, Virginia Tech, Louisville, West Virginia, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh was a good football team. Yeah, there's no embarrassment in losing to any one of those teams, and they were in every ball game. They had, obviously, their big win against Rutgers, had a nice comeback against Connecticut. Uh, and overall, in terms of the, of the schedule, Cincinnati had the third toughest schedule in America. And so it speaks volumes for, for the talent level that they had this year. Davila was looking deep, but he overthrew the receiver out of bounds. It still sounds strange to me when you say they had a big win this season against Rutgers. Big win against Rutgers. Is the highest ranked team, I think Rutgers was either eight or nine at the time of that win. And, you know, I mean, that's seven. a top ten. They were, they were up, they were up to time. seven. Yeah. So they're, it's a top ten team. Yeah, no, there's no question about it. The Rutgers is, has arrived, but it, it just still sounds strange. So they picked up their first bowl win this season. Greg Shannon doing a great job there. Davila in the pocket. Oh, finds a seam and tosses it into Martin. That'll be another first down. 
Well, London Fryer, number six, is on the sidelines right now. Maybe the coaches are trying to get his attention after the missed tackle and dabble it down the field. And you see the soft coverage. There's really no, there's no meshing with the receiver, even though it's zone. You know, he stuck that ball in a nice little window there through the zone and had uh, the underneath eat, the underneath coverage actually sucked the linebackers up a little bit, had just a small window and stuck it in there. Then in the backfield, takes a handoff and blasts through a hole before he's brought down just short of the 35-yard line by Fryer. That a boy he wrapped him up. Talk about a form tackle, Craig. You know, London Fryer, I got to tell you, all, it, it, Irving Fryer and I were teammates. Doug, you were. We're all in New England. London, when he was a little boy, was in our backyard, we're having a barbecue, and, and the swing set's going, my daughter's in the swing set, London walks in front of my daughter Jessica, and whack, <laughs> smoked London, and he went flying three yards in the air. You know, Irving was like, no big deal, Jack, he was like, oh, he's okay. <laughs> Tavala has an open man, overshoots him. Irving Fryer was, in, 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 you know, you've got a high, Ir Irving Fryer was the best athlete I've ever seen. Oh, he was an amazing athlete. The guy was phenomenal. Absolutely amazing. He ran that little short shuttle thing, oh. 3 eight, nine. He was flat out burner. First yeah. play of the game against the Bears. We just sent him deep. I threw it as far as yeah. I could. And he goes, he he just can run. He can he can flat out run. Athlete. Hands. Blocking. Strong. He crack on a linebacker, knock him on his butt. Yeah. Tired as the fifth leading receiver in NFL history. Moore with the ball that time. As he picks up two. And the first quarter is about to come to an end. The first quarter of the first ever international ball. Play here in Toronto. And Cincinnati feeling right at home as they have a 14-0 lead headed to the second quarter. to Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And when you come to Toronto, you do not want to miss the Hockey Hall of Fame. Of course, Wayne Gretzky featured very prominently there as the best player to ever play the game. If you look deep around, you, you'll not find my jersey in there. The best game ever oh, right bubble there. Hockey. Bubble hockey. This? No doubt about it. Oh, it's great. No, hey, you would love it if you played it. <laughs> And there's a look. This is the Rogers Center, Benton in the backfield. This is where the Blue Jays play, and the Toronto Argonauts are the Canadian footballer. Quick strike between two defenders to Dominic Goodman. Nick Davila started one game this year. Yeah. And that was against, oh, Rutgers. against Rutgers. A big win. Yep. You know, and, and they've had it, they've been using Dustin Grutza last year, this year. But look at Davila. I mean, he throws the ball. He He's throwing in rhythm, out of the breaks, and like we said, Western likes to bring pressure. They can't get to him. He's setting his feet, the ball's gone. Benton alone back again. Davil out of the shotgun. And again, quick strike. Touchdown, Cincinnati, Dominic Goodman. Again, a nice rhythm throw. Just very impressive. Very impressive. 21 yards on the crossing pattern that he just danced into the end zone with. And, and you talk about the timing, stops, the drop. Settled by Goodman in the little zone area right there. Didn't continue and run right into the safety, so he gave that little passing lane window. Dabla found it. Yeah, Goodman's running a slant. And he just settled his feet. After he made the break, sat in that window, gave him a nice target, bang, he's in the end zone. Kevin LaBelle is pretty much automatic. The 82 straight without a miss. It's 21 to nothing. Dabble is doing a terrific job. We came into this game, I did at least, thinking Cincinnati was just going to try to pound the football and run the ball. And what do we got? We got a passing game going. So Brian Kelly said, and that was for his zone, though, but Brian Kelly said that what he's going to try to do is do a lot of two tight end formations and bring the safety down and, and get the corners one-on-one -on -one out there and throw against the corners. But now this is a zone coverage. This is something completely different, and it doesn't matter. One, two, three, ball, and it's, it's a touchdown. 
Well, Davila, you mentioned his only start was against Rutgers, and it was an upset of Rutgers as well. Passed for 277 yards and a touchdown. 83-yard hookup with Brent Creek. He also ran for another touchdown as well. Finished 11 of 15, 277 yards and a touchdown. We're ready to go. I did a Cincinnati game against West Virginia last year, and Dusty Brutza was the quarterback. You can see Dabble with one start, six touchdowns to one interception. Brutza making some mistakes. But this is a quarterback, Dabble, who's a senior and moving on. And Brutza will play. He's going to get some snaps today. But I think it's about recruiting, you know. Now, Brian Kelly's got a chance to go tell some high school stud, look, I need a quarterback. Oh, here in Camden, he just kicked it through the upright. Did it he, go through? Yes, that's he, a point. He made an H. Point. He, he, he kicked the oblong ball through the edge. It was short. <laughs> it, was it short? Oh, man. Uh, I thought that, oh, it, huh? it was a wide left. Oh, man. Just, just short. a little short. Just uh, a little short. Well, we've been lobbying as a It still went out of the end zone. It's a rouge. It's a single point. Right. We're in Canada. Doug's trying to change the rules. And it, it's more I like think it's Canadian a good idea. Rules. You know, it just adds another element to the kicking game. Well, absolutely. If you can put it through that thing from that distance. But, of course, in Canada, if you don't run that ball out, that is one point. <laughs> I went through this before, though. When a kickoff, the ball's not touched, it doesn't count as a single point. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh! Problems on the handoff. Cupid finally picks it up and manages to fire a pass before and get knocked on his seat. Ledbetter was the intended receiver. Let's take a look at the difference in the rules in the Canadian Football League. And Doug, you played, obviously, in the league, so I'll let you take this one. Well, the 65 yards wide is the big difference. The, 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 the width of the field, a 53-yard width in the NFL, 12 players on the field instead of 11, three down, so you're punting on third down. And I uh, didn't see what the bottom was. No fair there. catches. Oh, yeah, the no fair catch, so light up the punt return. Exactly. Field is also 110 yards long, so that would make the 55-yard line right. center field. Center field, and the end zone's 20 yards instead of 10. It's a nice stadium. Yeah, it's hotels it. connected to it. Yeah. Pretty easy getaway. You can look, you know, you can look out on the field. You can look out on the field from your room. You had a, you had a course, and you know, John Saunders. You had a uh, a two-story penthouse here. Yeah. Well, you know, I had a backroom closet with some mops in it. We yeah. set up the video camera on the John there. From there you from go. The that, that's that's what my room looks like. You can sit out there and watch the game. What we used to do when Doug Flutie played for the Argonauts here. Cubit has some time. Flushed out of the pocket, tosses it, but the quick toss is short of Brandon West. And right now, Western Michigan has converted a third down only once in five tries. Yeah, you know what? This is a game where Western Michigan needs to go to the sidelines and say, hey, let's start over. Let, you know, let's start over, go back to our game plan, and let's see what we can do from here on out. Let's ignore the scoreboard right now and make a couple first downs. Laney is back to punt. He's back on his five-yard line. Stewart to receive. Stewart's just going to let it drop. And he gets a bounce that goes straight sideways and out of bounds. 38 yards on the punt, no return. And right now, Brian Kelly's squad has a 21 to nothing lead here in Toronto. Back here in Toronto, John Saunders, Doug Flutie, Craig James, Todd Harris, and Cincinnati with a 21 to nothing lead. They've been very impressive, both defensively and offensively. And Brutz is going to come in at quarterback. Davila has just managed to lead his scheme to two touchdowns and add one from the defense. That helps as well. Hand off underneath to Glathar. Right now, let's check back in the studio. 
All right, John Scott Reese with a Sports Center in-game update. A couple of good basketball games. Notre Dame and Georgetown. Well, it's been good for the Hoyas. Jonathan Wallace here will knife to the rack for two. It's 33-23, but at one point it was 21 to four Georgetown. And over on ESPN, bit of a surprising uh, effort thus far from Virginia Tech, playing well at Cameron Indoor. Coleman Collins the throwdown and the Hokies lead, guys. Thanks a lot, Scott. We'll be checking in with Scott along the way. See you, luck. Receiver on that one. What do you think the thinking is uh, to make a quarterback change this early in the game? Well, he's looking for the future, too. He wants to know what Grutza can do. And I, I tell you, right right now, he's running more of the spread stuff that we saw from Central Michigan, Brian Kelly's old offense, that will be the new offense as of Monday. He's going to keep it this time on the fake. Run out to the left. Fight his way towards the 40-yard line before C.J. Wilson is there to bring him down, but not until he gained five yards. Of course, you can bring Grutze in because this offense has been on a roll in this football game. Uh, 177 yards, 10 first downs, almost eight yards of carry. And for Western Michigan, I mean, they can't even hardly spell offense right now. Big play up through midfield. As Brutza fights his way free for 17 yards, C.J. Wilson makes the tackle, but Brutza brings you that element that Davila maybe doesn't have. He does have a lay. I mean, he ran for 75 yards against Louisville earlier this year. He had a 71-yard rushing game. He's had some games where he tucks it under and moves. He's got experience, and, and Brian Kelly will, starting Monday, put in his system and his offense, and I, I think Gooch is the guy. Quick handoff underneath. Fly far. If you're Dabala, you decide, you know what? Maybe we'll just play a little bit here, not stick it in the end zone, keep the game a little closer, leave me in. Let him stay. <laughs> if I had known we were going to score that quickly and then blow that, you were going to pull me out, then I maybe we wouldn't have scored so quickly. <laughs> you know, and, of course, Brian Kelly going with a senior quarterback and, and not Grutzel allows him to tell a kid in high school that he's recruiting, hey, I'm looking for my guy. I'm still looking for my guy. So fake rolls to his right and tries to run and gets back near the line of scrimmage. I want to remind everybody tomorrow at 8 Eastern on ESPN, our college football bowl game coverage continues. Coach Frank Solich, remember him with Nebraska, he did a great job with Nebraska, but moved on to the Ohio Bobcats, takes on Southern Miss, Golden Eagles, led by freshman running back Damian Fletcher. The GMAC Bowl tomorrow at 8 Eastern, also available in ESPN High Definition. Grutza tosses it into double coverage. Knocked down. It's intended for Stewart. A couple of Broncos over there. Well, he had a couple other options on that play. He made a bad decision there and trying to stick it into the tight end. Well, pretty nice job of bracketing the tight end that time. But if you're Grutza, you're, you're disappointed that you didn't get points. You know, as a quarterback coming off the bench, you want to get on the field, put points on the board, touchdown, maybe they get three. Yeah, you want to show that I can do it too, take it right down the field and stick it in the end zone. Well, Val's made his last nine field goal attempts. This one is from 37 yards. That's the whammy. <laughs> Locks it up. And it's through. Oh, he started out like I didn't whammy him. He didn't whammy him. <laughs> Almost, though. <laughs> It's been all Cincinnati here in Toronto. As they've added a field goal now to the three touchdowns they have. And they lead the Western Michigan Broncos from the banks of Lake Ontario. Well, they're saying go Broncos, and their team needs to do just that. Down 24 to nothing, and Ryan Cuban. It has been a rough day above the border. The first mistake wasn't his mistake. It was a, a drop ball popped up in the air, touchdown the other way. After that, pressure on the quarterback hits. He's been struggling. He's getting hit when he throws the ball. Ball's on the ground a little bit. Just they've got to quit making the mistakes. And that's what Ryan's done over the year is avoid mistakes. 
He has to minimize mistakes and start putting it together. And get a one first down at a time. I, I just feel like the speed of Cincinnati is greater than Western Michigan right now. It's two different levels. And, and you know, think back though, Western Michigan went and played at Florida State this year, That's right. played a heck of a football game. So it's not like they haven't seen speed before, but today, speed's getting them. Weston Gebhardt back. Kick is short. West takes it. Across the 20. Tries to muscle his way towards 25. 18 yards on the return. And see what Western Michigan has done thus far. That interception really did. It, it set a, a bad tone for the game. And, and they just haven't recovered. But again, I go back to it, Doug. You know, you, we, we've been in games like this where you just want to say, stop, let's start over. Start over. Forget the scoreboard right now. Let's go find a way to get a first down. Go back to what our original game plan was, whatever that may be. Make some positive plays. Start feeling good about ourselves. And then we'll check the, what happens as it goes. Good toss, a little reverse. And then a little option on the pass. Man is open. Simmons. In for the touchdown! Or not, let's get it all at once. What do you say? A little razzle-dazzle there. Biggers with the toss. On what started out looking as a simple reverse, but Biggers not only threw the toss, but it was on the money. The Western strikes quickly to jump back in this game. Point after is good. Just like that, Cincinnati's lead is 24-7. 76 yards this play covering. All right, now here's Biggers. Biggers is the starting left quarterback. He comes over and plays a little offense and gets the big strike down the field. That's it, and he had to put it out there. He had to lay it out a good distance to keep it out in front. Simmons was behind the defender, but he still had to lead him. And he threw a great ball on the run, put it out in front. He's pretty fired up about it. Yeah, now he's going to go play defense, though. Save your energy. <laughs> go get some oxygen. Ah, he's young. He's young. There's plenty of, plenty of energy. And we're at sea level. <laughs> Obviously, deception is the key here. We've seen some nice plays run, the quote trick plays, but they're execution plays. You got to really make sure you sell it. They're coming with a reverse from the top there. You got to make sure that it looks like a reverse. Start in like you're going to crack the safety and block, and then boom, deep to the corner. It's all about selling it. I think Boise State redefined trick plays. Oh, this, are you this, kidding me? What about that for execution of your trick plays or? Shoot, you know, Wake's been doing it all year. They don't consider it trick play. They just do reverses and everything else. But boy, to execute the way they executed it when it was against Oklahoma. Against Oklahoma After when it was all down. on the line. Fourth down plays, two-point conversion. Last play. Wow. Boy, did we, did we segue into the Fiesta Bowl quickly or what? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you can't help but do it. The biggest, that's his first ever touchdown pass. Greg Moore mowed down at about the 30-yard line after... Picking up 20. Now that Broncos defense has to stiffen up. They got to come in with a play. They, they really do. They have to force a turnover because I think if it's not a turnover or a big sack to make a negative play, Cincinnati is going to methodically continue to move the football. Now Western has not shown any ability to slow down Cincinnati offensively thus far, regardless of which quarterback is in there. And Davila is back in, the lefty. He looks out to his left, flushed out of the pocket, and he's going to toss it away. We're here in Toronto, Ontario, Canada for the inaugural International Bowl. It's Western Michigan out of the Mid-American Conference, facing Cincinnati out of the Big East. John Saunders, Craig James, Doug Flutie, and Todd Harris with you here. Happy to be here from, as I said, what is my hometown, and what is very close to a hometown for Doug Flutie. I mean, hey, Craig, he won six MVP awards in the Canadian Football League. Six. Six. 
It's in insane. seven years, by the way. He's Elvis in Toronto. A big sack by the Broncos. They pass those out with a coffee and a muffin at yeah. Hortons. All right, here's that pressure the Broncos defense had to bring. Comes something different. Their linebackers play down the hill. This is a defense that brings seven up in the box, and you never know which seven are, to, are going to come. Usually, they confuse offensive linemen and have sacks. Yeah, they're big on the sack. They, they've got uh, 45 sacks this season, and they get after the quarterback. They have this the first one today. Negative plays to stop drives. Well, Catapane with the stop on that one, and again... Quickly flushed out of the pocket. That toss is going to be to nobody, so the Broncos are starting to bring people. Is momentum a funny thing? Look at the energy level. The energy level in defense, that whole series. They, they get flying around, make a play, getting in the backfield because of one play that happened on offense. The momentum swing, you know, you can't, it's, you can't bottle it. If you could, though, and oh. sell momentum, can you imagine if you could sell Mo? Oh, yeah, you'd make a lot of money. I'd buy a six-pack every morning. <laughs> and we'd replace Red Bull. <laughs> Broncos could end up with some terrific field position here. Chapel back to get it. He calls for a fair catch. Doesn't he realize he's in Canada? There's no fair catch. You can't, fair you can't catch. do that. 38 yards on the punt. But the Broncos, with the trick play, come in with a touchdown and suddenly get right back in this game. And then they go back to what they do best. Get the quarterback. seven years Cincinnati we believe Western Michigan right back in this thing one of the things about being Canada I like home is that there's certain foods you can get here that you cannot get in the United States and Todd's been trying one of them well, absolutely, John, and I'm doing it in style. You want to talk about great tailgating? Look at this. This is the ultimate tailgate. You come to Canada, I know Craig James is a little worried it might be a little too cold, but this is perfect. <laughs> 70 degrees, air conditioned, or you can turn the heat on. It's comfortable 65 degrees here in the Saunders Sweden. I'm just in the middle of ordering something. Hold on a second. Yeah, room service? Yeah, I like the party platter for 20. <laughs> yeah, a lot of Putin. Yeah, and yeah, sign it to the Saunders room. Yeah, Saunders suite and a big tip to you. Thank you so much. <laughs> so this is the way to go tailgating. I don't know what they do up there at Lambeau Field. I don't know what they do at Soldier Field. But if you're going to tailgate, you come here to Sky Dome, Rogers Center, you never have to leave. Roll out of bed, put the robe on, get the John Saunders party platter <laughs> ordered up, and you're set to go. I don't know about you guys, but uh, have a good game. I'm set. <laughs> I think it's officially called the John Saunders suite now. <laughs> is that actually... Can be charged to my room as he here goes. <laughs> he he uh, earned safe foods in, by the way, which which is a, a delicacy here in Canada. Basically, what it is is French fries. Sounds very healthy. With gravy over top of that, okay. and then melted cheese over top of that. All three I like. Put so, them together. Yeah, some people call it a heart attack and a bowl. Oh, oh. The Broncos almost broke another one. So they're going to come out right now with a little razzle dazzle. To try and get themselves right back in this game. Little double pass, a lateral to Martin. Martin go left-handed up the rail. Could have had oh, a big oh. one. Could you know, have had and, a big one. And the problem with that, Martin got up the field. You got to stay your depth away from the corner because the corner's coming up to make the tackle. You got to stay back on the lateral pass in order to throw the ball down the field. Sit Execution. You got to execute it. Do it right. Simmons was man making the pass on the play and got, kind of got popped a little bit as he was releasing it. Good strike across the middle and then a couple of Broncos run into each other. Cubit finds Simmons. Broncos do run a lot of these underneath routes, these crossing routes underneath and the, the, the efficient way to move the football. I'm glad to be here with you guys. This, you know, I haven't exactly been the healthiest person during these last holidays, and I missed you in Memphis, but... Because you're eating those french fries with gravy. <laughs> <laughs> no way I was missing this game. Oh, you got to go for it. Looking for the tight end to let better. Go for it, coach. Fourth in the yard. Go for it. Yeah, at this, at this point... This circumstance, the crowd is driven all the way from Kalamazoo. Yeah, and I wouldn't be opposed to call a timeout here to make sure everybody knew what they wanted to do. 
16 of 24 on fourth down conversions. Whoa! And a good toss. What a great fake. Ledbetter is the receiver. Three yards on the pickup for the first down, but the fake up the middle sold that pass. And this is a result of film study by Cincinnati because Western Michigan against Akron on short yardage goal line did the same thing for a touchdown. Doug, they get to the line of scrimmage quick and ran the ball, so that set this up. They sprint out of the huddle, get to the line of scrimmage, snap it quick, and this time they go to the play action. And a great effort by Ryan Cubitt to, to get rid of that football and get it to the flash because two guys came through on block. Thompson in the backfield now. Cubit making some changes at the line. Hands it off. There's no gain on the play. Get out of here. Come on now. Keep your heads in here. Do you hear that umpire? Do you hear that umpire? Get out of here now. Come on now. Keep your heads in the game. I gave him a heads up yesterday at the luncheon that uh, Western does run a lot of crossers. He was very, very pleased to know that because he's going to get run over a few times tonight. <laughs> Line at West, deep back. Keep it with a toss, gets it back from West. Now looking deep. Ball on the throw, oh, but that's going to be pass interference. Bowie on the coverage of Simmons, and Bowie just seemed to hold Simmons up. The ball looked first like it was going to be short, and then Simmons made sure, or rather Bowie made sure, Simmons could not get Pass the interference. ball. interference. Number 33 on the defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, and an automatic first down. I believe the Flutie factor is trickled down to Coach Cubit. I mean, they're pulling him out of the bag. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Trick plays, corners are one-on-one -on -one all over the field. This is a way to buy time running the trick play, the gadget play. Simmons on one-on-one -on -one coverage, goes up for the ball. Rather than waiting for it, he goes up after it, creates really the contact himself to get the interference call. Brian West, the single back. Western Michigan at the 30. Break on the handoff, and then they're going towards the end zone. Touchdown, Broncos! Woo! Hey, Martin! With a catch on the fly. 30 yards on the play. The coverage that Cincinnati runs, there's four guys that are responsible for quarters of the field. The safeties are up tight to play run, though. And on play action, they bite up a step, and the corners expect to have a safety back there and don't have any help. So the corners are one-on-one -on, -one on a post route, resulting in a touchdown. Extra point is good. Meyer knocks it through. Herb Martin has the speed. Now we've seen that. You're going to see the middle of the field. See the middle of the field that Doug you're talking about is opened up. Safety right in here comes to the middle, and that opens up the middle of the field. Here's your key guy right there. He's gone, left the middle, abandoned, and finally, Cubit with a deep throw on the money. On the money. Accurate deep throws. They're going to have an opportunity to hit those big, big Whoa. throws. Whoa! Hello! He's that's, in there, second base. That's the concrete. Concrete. Nice. That's concrete it's, out there. It's, it's, it's Canada. We're playing hockey in the end zone. He's on ice. He didn't bring his blades. <laughs> that is, that, that's concrete, folks, because oh, that's that's man. where part of the baseball stadium oh. is. Steven, you know that's, what? That's why you wear a tail pad. <laughs> They don't do it here. Nice job, Ryan Cuban. Was not making the deep throw. That one there, he's on it. It's almost like this offense has gained some confidence. They've kind of slowed down seeing the game. I've always believed that the team that runs its trick play first has an advantage because the kids loosen up. You start running trick plays, the kids get loose, relax, start having fun, and then they just play. Kickoff is going to reach the end zone down there. Uh, Dominic Goodman. Broncos fighting right back in this game after looking like they were going to get blown out. Down 24 to nothing. College football continues next weekend on ESPN and ESPN2. We'll watch many players' last effort to showcase their talents for NFL scouts. Next Saturday at noon Eastern on ESPN2. Catch the Interjuice North-South All-Star Classic.
Then next Sunday at 8.30 on ESPN, the Hula Bowl. Both games available on ESPN and ESPN2 High Definition. Cincinnati with the handoff to Benton. And he'll gain a couple of yards. Now we've got a Western Michigan defense that's playing more downhill and confident. And it may be, Doug, Cincinnati doesn't want to make a mistake down the field throw and to give the ball right back to the Broncos. I don't, th I don't think Brian Kelly will pull back the reins any, but I, I do feel the, the energy level of this defense is way up now. I've been playing with a lot more confidence. Benton in the backfield. Davila almost picked <laughs> off. Very close. He was looking for Benton. But he put it right in the hands of a Bronco. Yeah. Austin Pritchard gives a little bluff on the blitz, turned his, turned his head back like he was going to drop, and then came sprinting in, unblocked. Ball still gets tipped by Paul. How do you pronounce this? Yeah, if yeah, you say it. <laughs> That's what I get paid for, right? All right, a lot of folks up here at the line of scrimmage, but they'll back out at the snap. Which one's come, which one's dropped? Three of six on third down conversions in this game. Dabble wants it all. And the receiver trying to sell a little. His pulling lays out almost as if he was trying to get a flag on the play. You know, Cincinnati now looks like the team that's feeling a little bit of pressure and a little uncomfortable and rushing the throws. And again, it's that momentum swing. You think Coach Kelly's saying, all right, now, Dabla, now that kind of throw right there is what made you number two all year. <laughs> well, I got another guy over here that can go out there. My question to you guys is, he made the quarterback change to Bruce after he's well, but it's pretty much nothing. Yeah, he should, though. I mean, he said he was going to play Bruce, though, so he has to give the guy some snaps. I'd have probably left him in there, though, for another series, but old Mo ran across the sidelines with the Broncos. He was quick, too. I think oh. he picked up the kick and tee on the way, but Mo just and ran I across And I think old Mo thing. even ate one of those puntos, or uh, what that, that would slow Pintos? him down. Pintos? Uh, Pintos? 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 Oh. Yeah, that, that would slow him down. Oh, let's check it with Scott, Scott Reese. All right, John, coming up on the halftime report. Three ranked college basketball teams in some trouble against unranked teams, including Duke losing to Virginia Tech. We'll look ahead to the BCS title game as well as wild card Saturday in the NFL. It's all coming up at halftime. Now back to you. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Western Michigan going to the offense where they've been very successful. West takes the handoff and spots an opening and busts through it across the 40. Gets it down to about the 43-yard line before Dominic Ross is there to get him 16 yards on the pickup. 16 yards is about half of what they had in the first quarter total. Western Michigan had 36 in the first quarter. In the second quarter, they're up to now 100 and near 40 yards. That would be 44. I didn't know what they yeah, had on the run. He's, he's, <laughs> what was their yard? How many did he get on the run there? Don't ask the guy from Texas to do math. 134, baby. <laughs> oh, I said 44. I was wrong. You were wrong. Another first down for the Broncos. They empty the backfield. Oh, oh somebody got the count wrong. Ledbetter. That's just ready to go. But now the defense. That's false start. Just what they did. Number 82 on the <laughs> offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Now they've got him thinking what they want him to do. They're coming up the middle. Hey, you know, I don't have that much speed. Maybe I can get down the field in a hurry. Let me get up. Jeez. I mean, is do they have any trick plays left? I was going to say, is there a trick play that's illegal? Well, <laughs> if, they watch, if they watch Chris Peterson's uh, Boise State team of the day, I'd do oh, the hook and goodness. lateral. I'd do a few of these others. By the way, they do. They have that same exact play in their offense. Cubit rolls out to his right, has a man across the middle, and very nearly caught by Jamarco Simmons, just off his fingertips. Now I know why Cubit gets banged up, because he hangs in there and takes a shot, and he wants to deliver this ball. He's going to hang in there and step into the throw, and boom, ball, shot, just, and just missed by an inch. Simmons has to make this catch. This is a good throw. He's got to drive out of that break and go and expect the ball. Expect that you're the number one guy every time as a receiver. I, I like that. I, I'm putting the heat on Simmons there. Catch I'll, the ball. I'll take that. Drive I'm a quarterback. Out of the shotgun. 
do it. He, oh, they quickly get to him, and he crosses the ball forward. That's going to be intentional grounding. Should not be. I don't think it should either. Well, Trevor, and the flag came quickly. Let's see what it is. Maybe hold. Intentional grounding. <laughs> Somebody else feels the same way. There, Loss Craig. of down. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Third down. He's yep. trying to throw the ball to Simmons, and he gets twisted during the throw, and the ball gets halfway there. It looks ugly. It looks like he's throwing it right into the ground, but Simmons will be right in front of him on the ground there, getting up. Right and, there. And, and the ball's thrown at him. Umpire's got to step up and say, hey, there's a receiver in the area. He was trying to throw it to his back. You don't agree with that, Tom? I think, I, well, I got the call right. He's a hockey player. What do you want? I got it right. <laughs> Third and 24 now. Quick little screen, and that is dropped by Simmons. So the Broncos will be forced to punt. Yeah. Broncos now one of seven on third down conversions. Settle in here at the International Bowl. Blaney to punt. Derek Stewart standing just in front of his 30-yard line. Backs it up a couple of yards, calls for a fair catch. Hauls it in to 27. 44 yards memorable games of the year there were many 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 for all of us what about yours you know i love the trick play so i love the boise game it was amazing boise oklahoma at the fiesta bowl you thought it you lost it all right there fourth down and 18 hook and lateral didn't even have to make the second pitch sprint for the end zone fourth and two in the overtime for the touchdown and then the two-point conversion. One trick play after another. Gotta love it. Statue of Liberty play. Long pass for Cincinnati's out of bounds. You and I were in the airport. We got to the airport just in time to watch the end of the game in the overtime. We're sitting there screaming with a bunch of other fans as we're waiting for our flights to go back to Boston and New York. But what an amazing game. But when we left for the airport, the game was well in hand by Boise. Yeah, Boise, exactly. you know, as I was just going to check the final score. It took a while to find the final score. To wait for Babylon has missed his last five passes. Ben hands off to Greg Moore. That game, at the end of the Rose Bowl, gone back to the hotel, watching the game. And, and watching TV there with it, get in a car, had to listen to the call on the radio for a couple of minutes, got to the next bar with a <laughs> TV, and we, we're all calling each other, texting each <laughs> other. Right. It was a great game. It, it was all, fun. It's going to be, it's going to go down as one of the all-time classics. It probably already has. And yeah. It was just an amazing, amazing game. Well, unfortunately, what it's also going to do is going to create that much more controversy. Davila out towards the sideline, and that one is knocked loose. It looked like a reception by Stewart but it was pop free and it's fourth down so here here you are with a Cincinnati offense that did not want to have to come out here and punt the football back to the Broncos I say the controversy because we all would have sat there and said you know Boise State can't play with Ohio State they can't play with Florida they can't play with Oklahoma that's uh, just exactly what second. they would be expecting <laughs> everyone to say. Yeah, but you know what? And I, hey, we'll never know for sure. No, exactly. Unless they played in that conference that had to deal with it week in and week out, we'd never know. But for this season, we do know that Boise State's undefeated and beat Oklahoma. Exactly. And they also beat Oregon State, which beat USC. So they got a couple of impressive victories. Chapel back to field the punt for a fair catch. Not exactly a textbook catch on a punt there, Craig. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You can see a Bill Cuban. He, that, that's the kind that will make you lose hair. I mean, this is not exactly... Uh, Joey Chapel decides, you know, I'm going to catch this backpedaling and just uh, center field. <laughs> Two hands like a book. How wow. Do you, how do you think it changed? That his mom and dad felt watching that right there. You know, your family members. Oh, you're nervous. You're, you're, you're nervous. Just catch the ball. Just catch it. 
So Cincinnati turns it over after the punt. Three straight three and outs for the Bearcats. Western Michigan starts to work at their own 20 yard line. Hand off to West. And a quick speed to get it out over the 30 yard line. That's a check with me at the line of scrimmage. Cuban goes with a run right up the middle there. Only a three-down lineman runs right past that initial burst there of defensive line. And, and now they may be thinking, okay, hey, let's let's look down the field some. That was actually Glenn Thompson with the pickup. And now we get the toss out to Moragos. Four-yard gain you and can, a first down. You can just see Cupid. Cupid, Cupid, <laughs> throwing the ball with a lot more confidence. He could be Cupid. He could be. He just got engaged. He might have a bow and arrow. That's he right. got engaged at Christmas. Very good. So Cupid was there. Here's his fiance Mandy working on in the game. Watching man do a nice job. Hands this one. Off to Brandon West, and he fights his way for about three yards. Todd Harris, there's a look at Mandy. Yeah, Mandy is a uh, part of the member of the new family. They don't have just one wedding this year with Mandy and Ryan. Coach Cubitt's two other daughters are getting married this year, so he's got three weddings in the next 365 days and a big game here. Ledbetter, a big tight end, picks up 14 yards. I mean, this is see here's what the problem with Cincinnati's last offensive series was now you've given life to a Broncos offense that initially thought from the 20 hey let's just run the clock out all of a sudden they're thinking three points or more you know he's got to find some better breaks though you know his breaks are gone on this play and he's just looking for something to run into and oh, I, thought you, I thought you were maybe talking about Cubit's fiance the breaks and the no you're talking about the game no. I'm talking about the game see we're no. here for the game well I led better went out of control he was a oh. runaway truck he needed an exit ramp Cubit at midfield hands it off to Thompson whoops and then we're supposed to go the other that direction, right? Yeah. To, the, to our right. Well, Rebels was the one who drove them all the way back. Coach Cuba turning this Western Michigan Bronco team around. It's not just about getting the great athletes and being able to win games. For him, it's much more than that. I've been in so many spots where we, we wasted so much time on kids that didn't have great character. And then, you know, it's the old 80-20% rule. You know, you just spend 80% of your time on just 20% kids, and I wasn't going to do that when I got here. So we don't have to do it at Western Michigan. We've got a great institution. we got a great faculty. we got great people on there. And I was just going to go out there and get good character kids that want to be at Western Michigan. And, boy, it's worked. And guys, Coach Cubitt engineered the best one-year turnaround in MAC history and the second-best turnaround in 1AA college history. But that's not what has given the most satisfaction. It's been the turnaround in the classroom. He told me that when he arrived in Kalamazoo, the team had 26 players with a GPA under 2.0. This year, the Broncos have 46 players on the team with GPAs over 3.0. And this year, the team put in an amazing 2,500 hours of community service. Coach Cubitt said he had to let some kids go, but those kids who stayed were hungry for discipline. Not like our broadcast team. Hungry for discipline, but uh, the GPA is <laughs> similar. Uh, I'm not sure my GPA would have made that that graphic. You don't think so, huh? <laughs> when I was at Western, you know. So you added to that tradition of being a party school back then, is what you were saying? Yeah, exactly. It was, it was known as the number one party school back in the early 80s, 70s rather. Oh, I'm trying to make myself younger. Oh, oh, gets nailed. That's going to be an incomplete pass. But Anthony Williams got into the backfield somehow untouched. You know, it was Anthony Williams that a few plays ago ran right through the backfield and had West guard right past him. And this time again, he comes through clean and just lays a lick all around. For me, when I see a quarterback take a hit like that, 
I see the focus. He's down the field. He's looking at receivers. He's in the game. Exactly. He's locked in downfield, looking at coverage, looking for his receiver, taking his read, trying to make the throw. And he's not, and that, the, the problem with a lot of younger quarterbacks is they start looking at the rush when they've been hit a few times. Yep. And Ryan does not do that. Yeah, maybe maybe his mom and dad wish he'd looked a little bit more, and certainly his fiance now, because these injuries that Cubit has had over the years, uh, well documented at Western Michigan. But the, he got the broken right hand and left wrist, the torn knee up, chip bone in the left elbow, sprained ankle, leg, hand laceration, torn ACL in high school. He's done it all. I was going to say, maybe it's something about Kalamazoo, because I got all of those things, too. Yeah. <laughs> and more. It's the water. Uh, Kalamazoo, Waldo Stadium. The Broncos say they've taken on Central Michigan University. Beautiful sunny fall day. Students section, both sides. Then you got the bleachers on the other side where the baseball field is. And then you got a complete, like, a park. And the fans just go up there with their blankets. He, he, he and, likes and this they, place. And right. <laughs> Waldo Stadium. Waldo Stadium. And who went into Waldo and didn't come out with many yards? <laughs> Barrett Wolf. That's exactly You don't right. go into Waldo and run right, run over there. Well, you know what? What was the original name of Western Michigan? Nickname. Oh, you're, you got me on that one. Hilltoppers. Is that right? They were the Hilltoppers. I did Speaking not know. of your blanket and everything else, it was yeah. the Hilltoppers. <laughs> they changed the name later on. And I'm, you know, I just try to learn all I can about your background very good i didn't even know that they just put six seconds back on the clock cubit hands it off underneath to west west battles his way seven yards up the field the clock stopped again with another timeout is this one is called by Cincinnati. Cincinnati's going to try and get the ball back. Hopefully drive down for a field goal or, or a touchdown. Well, the Broncos got themselves in a third and 20 situation there, so they decided it's time to just uh, take their losses and run the clock a little bit. And now they got to give it back with 56 seconds left. If you'll recall, Cubit called timeout after that long tackle for a loss, right? I wouldn't have done that. I mean, that, that, that was really helping Cincinnati out here. Yeah, once you got in the long yardage situations, you, you just move on to the second half. Well, Cincinnati is going to get the ball with just about a minute left. Well, it has been a tale of two different offenses in this half for Western Michigan, a tale of, of Cubit starting and, and really not his fault. The deflection on the corner there to Simmons picked off by Cincinnati for a touchdown. Really a bad tempo setter. They just didn't have rhythm. They were very disoriented. Then the momentum swing came, Doug. They finally came with a little trickeration. You know, it's a touchdown. You run a trick play, you execute it well, you pick up seven points out of it, and the momentum swings back, and the kids start playing with confidence. Jim Laney, the punter. Stewart. Back to the ball. Fair catch. Just inside the 15-yard line. So Cincinnati will have 47 ticks of the clock to try and get a few more points out before we go to halftime. And, and, and like Western Michigan while ago, you know, maybe you run a play to see if you can get some yardage here, but you don't want to mess around at all. Uh, there's a better chance of turning the ball over and causing something good for Western Michigan than there is taking it the length of the field. Conservative, 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 you football guys. I would, I would never say that in the CFL, <laughs> but it's that NFL influence now. Uh-huh. Davila. Oh, popped up. Broncos intercepts it. Well, Lovman comes up with the interception. And I guess I don't know what the heck I'm talking about. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, this looks just like a great volleyball match where you've got a spike. Oh, a great set. Here. And, and, and an awesome job of deflection and setting it up. Bump set spike. <laughs> Spike it to himself, too. Oh, and he a takes play. a big hit from his own player and hangs on to the ball. But that's that defense that shows you a lot of folks at the line of scrimmage, and you never who's going to back out of there. People move, come up at the snap. Broncos defense showed up. Now, the clock would start again here on change of possession. So either use your timeout, which it appears they did. Yep. 
Well, Lutman, that's his second interception of the year. Now the Broncos with 25 second ticks. And they still have one timeout remaining. They're going to get a good chance to go to the end zone a couple of times. Yeah, a, a field goal here cuts it to one score. Right. So in taking your shots for the end zone, be smart, conservative, <laughs> <laughs> whatever you want to call it. But don't take too many risks. You want to take a shot at scoring. You definitely want to try to stick it in the end zone, but be smart with the ball. Run your triple reverse flea flicker throwback, whatever it is. Brandon West behind Cubit. They're going to pass, a little hump fake, a little fade route, just off the hands of Herb Martin. Do you need a little more air under that ball? Well, it was a scary throw because Mike Mickens gets his head around and sees the ball thrown. Martin reaches and it almost sticks. He almost makes the spectacular one-handed grab. But Mickens played that as well as you could possibly play because he did see the ball thrown. Initially, I thought it was going to be a back shoulder throw. But if he had done that, it would have been intercepted because the defender did get his head around. Second down. Hand it off to West. Gets popped hard after a three-yard game. Another timeout called. Western Michigan. Western Michigan Broncos coming off just a terrible season. Managed to turn around, as you heard Todd say, best turnaround in Western Michigan history, second best in the NCAA. Mir Ismail leading the Mackett Sacks. Tied for lead overall. Most wins since 2000. Just the third ball in school history. So the Western Michigan Broncos have a little bit on the line here. Plus, they, you know, they've got to impress the alumni. If they expect the alumni to contribute, right? Right. Like they, you. Then they would have to impress You and Wanda, I'm sure, will be writing your yeah. check here next <laughs> week, sending it into the Broncos. Uh, but I think what they've done is they've shown a lot of grit and determination, and that character that Coach Cubitt was talking about whenever he recruits that now on his team, that's really shown through brightly here in the second yeah. quarter. It really does. I mean, they were down 24 nothing, and they, they don't give up. They keep fighting and playing, and that's character-type kid. Empty backfield now. Cubitt to the end zone. And to the end zone where no one was standing. Let better possibly the intended receivers. Did somebody he, break, he break ran a route? Double, he ran a double move route where he's trying to run it like an out and up, but he cut across the defender's face and underneath him. And uh, the quarterback thought he was going straight up the field. He makes move the outside. Now he expects him to go up the field. Instead, he crosses the defender's face and the ball goes up the field. Well, and what they were hoping for was tight coverage so he could run the toast route on that linebacker. The toast the route. toast route? Also huh? known as the shake. That's it. Shake, bake, and toast. Are you going to share with the our, our toast. View, viewers what that means? Yes, okay. A, a toast route is if you're if you're running at that linebacker and that linebacker has inside leverage on you, right? His golden rule, do not let that guy get in front of me, right? So he's going to get up tight. If the linebacker's tight to the receiver, you run a little bit, two or three yards, two little, three little shake to the left, and then right back to the middle of the field. And that gives it just enough for that linebacker. If the linebacker looks... If he's, he's just got to be closer. He's got to be more snug. He needs to be up in here. And if you can make your head here, he looks back at the quarterback and you toast him. Let's see, but because there was that separation, the, the tight end decided, Ledbetter decided to cut underneath to give his quarterback a place to throw the ball. <laughs> no, I'm not sure. He toasted the defender. That's, that's where the it. toast. Just toasted his face. <laughs> See, folks. Come, back to the, come back to the huddle and he's like, man, I just toasted. Texas toast? You're not just watching a football game. You're getting an education here. <laughs> well, we got Bruto, Mills, and Tim. Get it right. <laughs> Nate Meyer with the field goal. Bags it straight through. And Western Michigan just about a half over on a 17-0 run after falling down 24-0. And this game looking like 
it was going to be an international incident. <laughs> Poor blowout. But it's not happening. We're back in a ball game here. We got a one score game. Hey. Now, 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 Doug. I know. I understand. You you get you get Toronto, but Craig, you don't understand what a superstar this guy is in Canada. I mean, you walk down the streets of Toronto with Doug Flutie, he may as well be walking down the streets with Elvis. And there's a reason why. <laughs> Six MVPs. What you got banged up a little bit there. That was my own guy, Paul Mazzotti, running in there. But you love playing in this league. I uh, absolutely love it. It was a fun free will. You know, when I see the trick plays that we've seen today. It makes me, re reminds me of the, of the way and the style we played. And, you know, we, we weren't afraid to do anything. And part of that was the fact that Don Matthews was our head coach and allowed us to do that stuff. Now, you were just voted the number one player in the history of the Canadian Football League. So one of the Argos going to get around to retiring New Jersey. <laughs> I only played two years in Toronto. Doesn't so matter. I don't know that's going to happen. Doesn't matter. So Calgary can retire. Man, if I'd have known that, Doug, John and I would have made a poster for you with your number and put you it up there. Lobby. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, the one. We can hug it out of Saunders' suite. <laughs> Forty-one thousand passing yards. Forty-one thousand. Yeah, that doesn't even count what he did in the NFL. Dude, in San Diego, Buffalo, and New England. Right now, let's check in with Todd Harris. Coach down 24 to nothing. What did you tell your team? Just hang in there. You know, we just we play a lot of fun. You know, we came out. You know, we we drop a pass. You know, for an intercept, and and we uh, we don't play real well in defense. But just keep hanging in there and keep playing. Sure, we're having fun. We'll go get them. Having fun is certainly a key. What do you need to do better in the second half? Well, I think we got to uh, make plays when we got a chance. We had two two touchdown opportunities and couldn't get to them uh, on, on two of those and control the ball and, uh, and and keep our will going. Keep our will going against those guys and give them a little bit of doubt and then we'll see what happens. Thanks for your time. All right, thanks. John? <laughs> Coach looks like he's having fun. He should. 17 consecutive points, and we've got a 24-17 game. Let's go to the studio in the Smith Barney Halftime Report with Scott Reese. of Lake Ontario in the Rogers Center, formerly the Sky Dome, home of the Blue Jays where they won two World Series here, home of the Argonauts where Doug Flutie was a star quarterback as part of his career in the Canadian Football League. Doug Flutie alongside of Craig James, we came in here for the international ball. In the first few minutes, as I said earlier, it looked like it was going to be an international incident. Because it was all Cincinnati before the Broncos fought back. Well, I thought Cincinnati really came out, and their speed was a difference in this game. And and Western Michigan, it took a while for them to settle in to start getting used to the tempo of the ball game. Cuban at quarterback early in the series here had the deflection that went the other way for a touchdown. It just wasn't working for them. They had no hope up front. They couldn't block anybody. They changed. They put the wig on, and they had a turning point. <laughs> turning point was running a trick play, a little reverse pass. Biggers lays it out there for the touchdown, and I, it, it just let go all the pressure. All of a sudden, they started relaxing and playing and making plays. And you could see the tempo of the game picking up for Western Michigan, except for sliding on their tails. But, you know, even defensively, got after it, bat the ball in the air, get an interception, four and a half, kick the field goal, and it cuts it to a seven-point game. Well, I'm going to go with the quote that you told me at halftime. I love trick plays. <laughs> Gotta come. The Broncos receive Brandon West battles his way out towards the 15-yard line. Let's take a look at the statistics from the first half. The early going, if you look at the first quarter, it was all Cincinnati. Yeah, and 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 the fact that its total yards are even, statistically, it's an even game now. It was a monster turnaround for Western Michigan. And now, when you think back, the interception return for the touchdown is the difference in the ball game when it looked like it was a total mismatch for the first quarter. Ryan Cubitt, the quarterback, Brandon West behind him. He's going to throw quickly up into the flat. Simmons. 
fighting his way towards the 20 yard line. And Todd Harris, what a what did the coaches have to think about that first half? Well, I talked to Coach Brian Kelly, and he was very loose as usual. He said two things. We've got to defend the trick play, and he's looking for a six-pack of that momentum that Doug Flutie's been pushing. He said, if we keep the momentum on our side, we're good. I said, how did your first halftime speech go as the head coach of the University of Cincinnati? He said, I couldn't find the locker room. I think he was <laughs> kidding, but uh, he said they'll be just fine. Oh, well, I'll tell you what. Th this dome is cavernous. It, it's not hard to get lost inside of Skydome. The Rogers Center, as it's known now. Brandon West across the 20-yard line, just one yard on the pickup. And there's that difference of, of the start in the way they finished, but the 164 yards in that second quarter, it, it helped tremendously Western Michigan's defense. It did. As soon as they got the trick play for the touchdown, the defense came out three and out, three and out, three and out. In addition to forcing an interception as well. Brandon West alongside of Cubit. Cubit drops back to third down play, steps up in the pocket, has a man open, but overthrows him. Chapel was the man intended to pick up the ball, but was just outside. Did a great job of moving around in the pocket, buying himself some time, but he had a feeling that someone was going to hit him real quick, so he releases the ball too soon. Great reaction by Chapel to pivot and spin back to the open area on the outside. Just a bit outside. <laughs> All right, Mr. Euchre. Bob Euchre up here in the booth rooms. Broncos Bunny. Jim Laney standing on his own five. Going to go across the 40 and get a little bit of a Bronco, Bronco roll before going out of bounds. 44 yards is the net on the punt. Cincinnati's offense really came out and strong outside the first one when they had the punt. They got on a roll and they put some points on the board and then they floundered down the back stretch. And I don't know so much that they floundered as much as they kind of went in a tank, Doug. You know, they had that big start and well, it kind of fell apart. I don't think you put flounders in a tank. And that's the ocean. That would be the ocean. A flounder would be in a tank, wouldn't it? Well, it would be under the, yeah, maybe. Deep. who had one hand on it and then wanted to go for the squeeze and almost had the interception. These Western Michigan defensive backs have great hands. When they get opportunities for interceptions, they usually make, make the most of them. This one gets away from them. Two hands are always better than one. I've heard that. And that would have been a case where Biggers, I, I really believe, he just maybe overran the ball, misjudged it. Second down and 10, Davila. Throwing out to his left, but right there, the Broncos are immediately there to tackle Bill Poland, and it's only a three-yard pickup. Hey, Biggers reacting very quickly there, coming up, making the tackle. He reacted on the deep ball. He's had himself a nice little game, as well as a touchdown pass. People watching, we should probably point out that you know, they, you think Western Michigan, Mid-American Conference, Cincinnati, mid-level of the Big East, there's a lot of Sunday players on this field right now. Well, you got guys that, that grade out well in the combine type guys that have speed. There's a lot of speed on this field, that's for sure. Completion to Dominic Goodman. Fryer with the tackle. Nine yard gain. The one on one coverage there, put the brakes on on Fryer. Nice ball. Yeah, you know, the, the key to those completions is timing of the throw. The ball has to be out on time because that separation is only going to be for a split second. Cincinnati just shy of midfield now. Trying to show some offense, which they did not in the second quarter of the game. Moore calls it, and he goes for another first down. Get out of here. Zach Davidson with the tackle, but this is what Cincinnati looked like in the first quarter of the game. Davila uh, trying to reestablish that momentum that they had early in the ball game. The, the timing route that Doug just showed you there. Davila was hot. He was accurate early on, and then he got away from it. But uh, more is showing you the power, the streak, and the speed out of the backfield once he catches the ball. 
Dabble again and then tosses it underneath to Moore. And he fights his way. A good job of getting it across the 35-yard line. Again, on every play, Western Michigan bringing a blitzer from one side or the other. Here, the screen is a great call. Looks like it was going to be a real big one at first. If he bounces to the outside, he might have a chance for a big one. But he cuts it north, north and south, making a positive game. Not, not so much blitzing as it is. There are seven guys up there, and there are different bodies that are coming. Greg Moore takes the handoff. He stopped after gaining about a yard or so. Teeth off with the tackle. It's going to be close to a first down. Well, that's the power, power football that we're used to seeing out of Cincinnati there. Just running the power right up there on short yardage. Doug, is this the same turf you played on when you played in Toronto? Absolutely not. This is good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this is field turf. This is a lot softer. Uh, this actually is put down in grids, little, I, I believe they're about 10-yard squares that, that they come out one piece at a time, put together like a jigsaw puzzle, and has the U.S. field on it, where our old turf was a bald, artificial turf. That, Original uh, stuff, remember oh, back in the 70s? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They had very little padding to it. Thought it, it was cool, though. It, it was fast. Yeah, it was fast, and it's and probably why our back and oh. knees hurt so much uh, so often now, too. It's good for baseball. My brother, who played baseball a long time, he loved playing here in Toronto. Yeah. Chris said he could hit the ball really well in here. Well, how would you like to play third base and have line shots on AstroTurf at you, all that stuff? Well, at least it'd be a true hop. <laughs> I wouldn't want a shot coming at me at the box over there any time. Greg Moore in the backfield, and quickly, Zabala is brought down by Zach Davidson as again the Broncos bring the pressure a loss of nine. All right, fourth down, bunched up there. Play action is a nice little call here, but you're going to see at the line of scrimmage, there's the bodies up there. Seven different Broncos, hard to the middle, leaves outside clear. Boy, they're just bringing it, and, and offensively, you leave the outside rusher free. You block as many as you can, but the ball's got to go. Brian Steele is the punter. Stewart back to receive. I'm sure he'd be happy to see it go through the end zone. And that's exactly what it's going to do. And no, Doug, it's not the CFL. You do not get a point. 40 yards on the punt. It'll come out to the 20. We got a close one up here in the International Bowl in Toronto. Today's game is being broadcast on ESPN2 HD, presented by Olivia. And there's a look at the skyline of Toronto. And that big dome, the Rogers Center right here, was state-of-the-art when it was built about 20 years ago. It's been duplicated many times now around the United States, but it was the first with the retra retractable, rather, dome. Cupid hands it off. And West cuts his way in. Three yards on the pickup. Let's find out how the Duke Blue Devils are doing. Well, John, they were down three in the final 20 seconds at home against Virginia Tech. Pretty much the one guy you want to make sure doesn't shoot in that situation, Demarcus Nelson. He's got 22 in the game. That ties it up. Last chance for the Hokies in regulation. Xavier and Dowdell, and that's not exactly high percentage. We're in overtime over on ESPN. Duke up by two. John? Thanks a lot, Scott. Man, overtime at Cameron is not a good thing. No, you need to win that regulation right there. You, win you it had your chance. It's Leo out of Morgan. Morgan looks like once they get out of bounds, Morgan hit the camera. Ooh, after it was rolling. Mm, glad he's up. Senior. In Windsor, Connecticut, right out near the airport. Yeah. Not Windsor, Ontario. No, no. She's across from Detroit. I mean, this can be a ge geographical lesson, right? Sure. 
By the way, well. it hey. looks pretty nice outside. Hey, we got a bear cat in the booth. We got a bear cat in the booth. Whoa, <laughs> we do have we a bear cat. We have a loose bear cat. We got, What's up, man? Loose bear cat. We got hey, the bear cat. You need to go find that offense. In the booth. Don't leave us yet. Cubit under center. West behind him. Takes a handoff. West spots an opening and squeezes his way across the 30-yard line for what looks like a first down. Seven yards on the pickup. Uh, we said we had a Bearcat in the booth. Bearcat in the booth. You know, this is a Bronco. This isn't a Bronco alumni. Say, yeah. But he's, he's, he's not part of the <laughs> Where's your hockey stick? <laughs> Big fight. I could cross-check him <laughs> and take him out. <laughs> But this is uh, this has been a fun thing for a lot of the people up here in Toronto. We never got a chance. I mean, they watch college football rapidly, but to actually have a chance to have a bowl game here is huge for the people here. Broncos moving it again. Simmons. You know, we saw trick plays in the first half that got Western Michigan going, but this has been good offense. Two nice running plays out of a two tight end set. Now the ball to the flat. Simmons is a big boy. And, but Simmons early in this game was thinking about Bearcats, and he wasn't thinking about his football team, was he? He had the deflected ball that was tipped, went the other way for a touchdown, had another drop in the flat. Now he's, you know, the big guy's catching the ball and get up the field. He's getting his rhythm a little bit and lowering that shoulder and getting a couple extra yards. So it's a... Three yards to a first down. Handed off to West. And he's quickly bunched up after gaining two. So it'll be third and short. You know, sometimes we've all been in matches, games. They call them a hockey is a match, right? Well, I call them a game. A, a game. <laughs> and, but and but he, they wear sweaters. Yes, okay, we go do. ahead. That's right. <laughs> Where you're not thinking about the game, maybe it's a little bit faster than you. Maybe you're, you know, you're thinking more about your opponent than you settle in. Right. Is that what we're seeing? The I think the Broncos Broncos settled Broncos. in. That's yeah. what it looked like. I mean, 24 to nothing. This thing looked like it was going to be a blowout. And Western Michigan started playing like they were the team in the lead. There's another quick toss. And that was going to be for first down. Well, you know what it was? All three lines had to get in their second shift before they got loose. That's <laughs> over the boards. Herb Martin with the reception there. Let me tell you what they're setting up right here. They're opening up the deep ball off of this. They're throwing the under route, the under, the under. And there's one guy out there who's going deep. And they're setting this play up big time. Mark it down in your book there. Okay, number. I, right, I say it'll be number seven. I yeah. say Martin is the speed guy that's going to go off the play action pass and run the post route again. I'm talking about off of that action right there in the flat. Off the sprint out? Yes, off the sprint out. Okay. They're not going to throw the under. They're going to throw the deep ball. Brandon West, the lone back. Cincinnati shows that they're coming. Cubit rushed out of the pocket, tries to throw back across his body, but well short of any intended receiver. I thought he saw a, uh, an offensive lineman who he figured might be a receiver threw well, it at him. I was going to say, I hope But he it did, did one hop, two receiver down the field. Right. So he got away with it. He better hurry up and get married before he has to go back to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> For another visit. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> <laughs> he's a he's a pit cushion. Yeah, he started his career over or his college career over in Rutgers and got getting the tar kicked out of him, beat up over there before he transferred. And they're not getting the tar kicked out of him at Rutgers anymore. No, I was gonna say. I wonder what he thinks, but he's done quite a job here. Cubit throws it out. It'll flat to Simmons. Tomorrow at 8 Eastern on ESPN, our college football bowl game coverage continues. Coach Frank Solich and the Ohio Bobcats take on Southern Miss and the Golden Eagles, led by freshman running back Damian Fletcher. The GMAC Bowl tomorrow at 8 Eastern, also available on ESPN HD. And, of course, the Bobcats also out of the Mid-American Conference, like the Western Michigan Broncos. Simmons, seven receptions for 115 yards and a touchdown. He's got a long third down here. Drops back, fires quickly to the sidelines, and it's picked off. Mike Mickens stepped in front of the intended receiver and just picked it off. That was just great coverage, because this is great timing on the throw, rhythm drop, one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside, and Mickens just jumps the route. He actually goes around the receiver to the ball. I mean, you can't break on the ball any better than that. Maybe the receiver could help him out. Yeah, how about Herb Martin, though, just kind of rolling into that. Now Mickens gives his offense the ball back. Can the Bearcats' offense show up? There. 
Cincinnati fan fired up with a seven-point lead. The bad news is they had a 24-point lead, and there's the Broncos. And there's somebody <laughs> waiting for the NFL playoffs to start. I said, shouldn't he be somewhere else? Davila, short of his intended receiver, Bill Poland. Who? Bill Polian? I thought he was a GM no, somewhere. Is, he is a GM somewhere, uh, I believe. Colt, Indianapolis. That's why Peyton's at the game here. Peyton lost his face mask. I'm telling you, if Peyton shows up at the game like, looking like that, <laughs> Bill Polian is going to be a little unhappy. Now, let me tell you who's not showed up here uh, since maybe the first quarter. Who would that be? That would be the Cincinnati offense? That would be the right answer. Davalon to the center. Throws it out to his right. But again, Western Michigan is there immediately to cut down Seelick. This defense has been schooled up on tackling through the legs. They have a lot, a lot, a lot of low tackles. I know out on the corner, bigger, bigger, was it bigger? Go, go ahead, go ahead. I, you know, going. I've had a rough Get day with names. Yeah. Right. But they have. They've been coming up, tackling low, and wrapping up. So now a third down and nine. Davila's pass is picked up. And it's going to be close to a first down as Derek Stewart made the catch and then wrangled his way up near the first down marker. Nine yards. He looks on the games. Did you say wrangle? Wrangle. We got a text in here. Yeah, I don't wrangle. I don't want to wrangle him. Yeah. He's, he's, he's wrangling up this here. hockey talk. I've been hanging around him for so many years now. I'm starting to sound like a Texan. Y'all come back with me next week to Texas. I got to buy a bunch of yearlings. <laughs> We got some. We got some hay that we gotta get ready for today. No, no, no. Huh? What do you pay? I get you a hat and some boots and a belt buckle. We were about two fifty an hour, probably. Well, this guy, I'd go to three dollars an hour for you, Saunders. <laughs> Cincinnati gets the first down. Greg Moore in the backfield, and this time that one is going to keep it and go towards the sidelines. He picks up two. After the fake there. Again, this is a, a homecoming for me. Uh, this is very exciting to actually be in, in the... I was born about a mile and a half from here. And uh, to be here is exciting. And I know for Doug, who did so well in the CFL, six MVPs, it's fun for you to be here as well. It's a lot of fun. I was just visiting with Damon Allen. Damon, the younger yep. brother, Marcus Allen, quarterbacks Toronto, and, and has been in this league for years. And it's just fun to visit old friends come on up. Of course, Greg James making his first visit here, but it won't be his last. Quick toss by Davila. Completed to Selleck. Damon Allen, there you go. Professional football's all-time leading passer. He has played, I believe, 22 years up here. They're somewhere in that ballpark anyway. He's thrown for 70,000 yards. Wow. Just uh, an amazing career. A number of great cups with different teams, whether it was out in Edmonton or here in Toronto. Uh, he's had a phenomenal career. Warren Moon's got to be up there close as well with his NFL and CFL. Warren was over 60,000. Yeah. Handoff this time to Moore. And he breaks free. He's into the backfield before he's hauled down inside the 10-yard line by Delmas. There's that Cincinnati offense. And, and tackle to tackle. You know what? When you, things aren't going your way, get inside the tackles. This is what they've made their bread and butter with over the season. An excellent blocking. Look at the assignments. Good job coming around finding your man. Power football. And, and again, the Broncos defense, their front seven, they move around. They're not big enough to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Cincinnati's front guys. And so get the game back on your side. This was a huge, huge series for Cincinnati. 21 yards on that pickup. Again, the handoff is to Moore. And this is what Cincinnati's done well all year. They've been a two-back offense, hammer the football, downhill running, ball control. And we've seen a little of Brian Kelly's influence with some no huddle and an influence to spread them out once in a while. But this is their bread and butter. And they're trying to take the heart and soul away from the Broncos. Western Michigan against Akron in their last ball game, minus 13 yards allowed rushing. Right. So, you know, you, this is what they do best. 
the guys in the white jerseys and the guys over in the black jerseys, what they do best is run the football. Old-time hockey, old-time football. Hand off again to Moore. And again, he's bunched up. But down around the three-yard line. Three-yard pickup. Toronto, it is a nice city, John. You know, you, yeah. you really, you've sold me on it all fall about this deal. And I, it, it, you know, last night we were on King Street. Yep. A lot of different establishments. The Andrew right. District. Doug yep. is You visited them all. Doug walks in, you know, we're having a nice quiet dinner. It goes from being quiet to everybody, you know, <laughs> checking us out. <laughs> oh, yes. You cannot walk this town with Doug Flutie. Oh, you want to make some time going anywhere. Ninth play of this drive. Makes the handoff. Davila goes down. Western Michigan collapsed pocket. Davidson was the first one to get to him. How did he hold on to the football? There's no way he held on to the football there, Craig. Well. Yeah. Aggressiveness. Playing full speed. Full speed to the ball. Was that ball not That out? ball is out. He might have a... Well, he's got a red hanky in his no. pocket. Huh? Here we go. Here we go. We got a timeout. Here we go. Zach Davidson. He came out of there with the ball. The play is being reviewed. Davidson came out of the pile with the ball as if he thought it was a fumble. Davila had the ball hanging by his hip in one hand when contact was made. So, I mean, I just don't see how he could hold on to it and keep possession. Oh, that's a fumble, boys. Ball's out. Ball's out. Challenge did not come from Western Michigan. It's coming up from the replay booth. Ball's, ball's out right there. Yeah, that ball's loose. Possession is not with the quarterback. That no. ball is... That's going the other way. That would be a huge turnover for Cincinnati. It, again, it has to be indisputable evidence, but from our look at it, looks pretty conclusive to me. Yeah. Well, Zach Davidson says, is arguing his case. Originally live, though, for the official, there's just a mass of people, and the ball never really, you know, it was never on, it, I don't think it ever hit the ground. Right. So it, so the official on the play probably couldn't see a ball come out. And it takes a replay. At that point, Davidson's got it he already. He already has it. And right. he knows it, too. On the season, the most turnovers gained in the 2006 season, Western Michigan now, if this were to go their way, would be 32. They're number five, four, tied for fourth in the country. I mean, so this team, they take the ball away. And the interceptions they've had this season have been astronomical. And at the point in time where we are in the game, and obviously the point where we are on the field, this looms large for Coach Brian Kelly of Cincinnati if this one goes against him. All right, let's put it down and go. Yeah, let's make a decision not, and go with yeah, it. Yeah, that's, that's exactly. That's the only that's thing. Doug, yeah. You know, that's my only argument with replay. It's because you're getting old and crusty now. You, you, no patience. After review, there is indisputable video evidence that the ball was loose before the quarterback's knee was down. The fumble was recovered by Western Michigan. It will be Western Michigan's ball. First down, 10 yards to go at the 12-yard line. Please reset the game clock. With, when he comes out and says indisputable, everybody right away thinks, oh, it's not going to get overturned. Right. <laughs> but no, there's no question that Davidson had ripped that ball free of Davila and had it in his arms. Look at that. It's already loose. One arm pit equals possession? Sure does in this instance. Big turnover for the Broncos. <laughs> that man may have just changed the course of this game as Cincinnati looked like they were marching down on their first possession here in the second half. 
close to scoring a touchdown, but Davidson rips the ball free. As a result, Western Michigan gets the turnover, and now they're on offense. Brandon West in the back. Cuban going deep. Too deep. Let's check in with Scott Reese in the studio. Well, John, quite an ending with Duke and Virginia Tech. Duke was up one late in the game. Jamont Gordon in overtime. Lefty up and good, so the Hokies have a one-point lead. Duke missed a shot. Virginia Tech forced a foul. One or two free throws. Duke down two with the ball. Final seconds. Greg Paulus blocked by Deron Washington. And the Dukies lose their ACC opener for the first time in 11 years. Guys? That was a risky block. Yes. Two-point game. Guy shooting a three. Foul Send here. him to the line. He did get to block, so surprise, surprise. Virginia Tech turns the tables on Duke. Brandon West takes the handoff and weaves his way. What type of a back do you describe him as? I mean, he seems like sidestepping, weaving, finding the hole. He's a little scat back type of cut back, speed oriented, slashing. He uh, he really, he's got tremendous speed to the outside. He hits the hole quickly. He's, he's a freshman, and so the upside here for him is pretty good. And, and the fact that his feet give him a little bit of a, a wiggle, but the burst, the burst is the most important thing. Yeah, and the guy that's been playing for them most of the year is Bonds, and Bonds is more of a downhill fullback type runner, real strong, powerful guys. He's a great changeup. Broncos 2 of 12 on third down conversions. Cubit has his man and has a first down. Terrific grab by Simmons. 13 yards on the pickup. First ball of the game, we've seen Cubit go in the pocket and stand there and deliver downfield on the money like this inside. I mean, we've seen the long ball down the field, but the hook right coming right in there in the zone. Well, two things. One, protection was solid. The other, the safety was breaking hard. He had to get the ball there in a, in a hurry. So the Broncos get themselves some breathing room. Give it to West. West again fights hard for his four yards. Hit the hole was probably hit it after two yards, and Corey Smith couldn't stop him from getting a couple more. College football continues next weekend on ESPN and ESPN2 as we watch many players' last effort to showcase their talents for NFL scouts. Next Saturday at noon Eastern on ESPN2, catch the Into Juice North-South All-Star Classic. Then next Sunday at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN, it's the Hula Bowl. Both games available in high definition. Second down here, toss up to West. Works his way towards the 40-yard line, five yards before he's brought down. Very nice play there. They run a bunch set. They have three receivers in a tight area, in tight to the line of scrimmage. Pitch the ball and get the corner with a couple of crack blocks coming from outside in to get the corner. But don't you feel like even Western Michigan's coaches have kind of settled in on a play calling pattern here? They're throwing the ball, moving it around. They've got the inside running game. They've run the toss sweep. They're starting to expand their playbook. Brandon West takes the ball and he's hit in a hurry. Be up close to the first down, two yards on the pickup. That's going to be a first down. You see the yellow line out there? Yes. <laughs> I don't. <Yeah. laughs> I, I don't understand that. Every time I watch a game at home, there's a yellow line on the field that shows me where the first down marker is. But when I go to the game, it's not there. I keep looking for it, but it's it's deceiving. My wife keeps yelling at me for not diving for the yellow line. You know what would be great? To be perfectly honest, is if they could <laughs> put the yellow somehow, somehow put the yellow line on there for the fans in the stands. You ran out of bounds, six inches short of the yellow line. What are you thinking? Oh, Cincinnati's saying it's short. First down. First down. <laughs> the credit card. Oh. Oh. I saw light. Now, now the camera angle might be different, but I did see light between the end of the ball and the post. Yeah, my wife saw light between the credit card and the slash machine. <laughs> <laughs> Several times. <laughs> First and ten, Maryland. Oh, that by, that by, the, I see light. I yeah, it's the angle. It's the angle. I think it's the angle. I'm sure it is. Broncos first down. Hewitt takes the pitch, rolls to his right. 
tosses it to Simmons. And Simmons picks up four yards. Now, this was the same exact look as the toss sweep with the crack blocks. Instead, Simmons, instead of blocking down, slips across underneath and out in the flat on the backside. They run a, a naked bootleg the yeah. other way. He, he becomes the, the tight end. A lot of times it's a tight end. You get the tight end over the top, and up below, you've got the halfback. And again, this playbook has expanded, hasn't it? There's a lot of different plays being run. They're running these little five-yard efficient passing, first down passing plays. Simmons, 133 yards on nine receptions. And uh, Thompson, as he moves to his left, there's nothing there. He, Thompson's finding himself running lateral and spinning yeah. back. He's got to get north and south at some point. Even even if it's not well blocked, there comes a point where you decide, i got to put my head down and lay it up in there. A loss of five as the quarter comes to an end. Much the same way we began it. A one-touchdown game up here north of the border in Canada. Cincinnati 24, Western Michigan 17. The show tonight. Game time. Let's do this thing. Mm. that the victor of this game will get. The International Bowl, a little maple, I'm sure. And uh, Crystal. Surprised he didn't fill it with maple syrup, though. Kubik steps up. Oh, fires a strike. But it's going to be short of the first down. Simmons, the receiver. Simmons has really come around. He's catching everything thrown his way, being tough inside, getting hit a little bit. And Cubit did have an opportunity there to step up and throw it. He's who stepped up. You know what? Cubit's really started to make some plays throwing the ball to his guys. And and instead of the other guys? Yeah, and the other guys. That's a good that's a good starting point. Final game between he and his dad, right? You know his dad right. Bill, said he's looking forward to not having his son play really for him so he can have just a father-son relationship. A regular relationship again. Good. Punt. Deep punt. Oh, Western had a chance, but I don't think they saw it. 52 yards on the punt. All right, Cincinnati's offense. Brian Kelly's got to get these guys going, Todd. He's got to get them back on track. Yeah, no question about it. You guys were just talking about Ryan Cuban a moment ago. As I mentioned at the top of the show, quarterback Ryan Cuban has endured seven surgeries and one famous run-in with the one and only, that's right, Doug Flutie. Check that out. Check out Flutie's hair. Cuban was destined to play quarterback after this run-in with Flutie back in 1985. And just to show you, he's grown up a little bit. We decided to recreate that memorable moment with a slight twist. They had to bring in the big uglies to hold up Flutie. Oh, it's a before and after. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. Now, now, what's the story? How did you run into young Ryan Cuba? Well, I was in the USFL with the New Jersey Generals at training camp down at the University of Central Florida, and uh, Bill Cuba was an assistant coach there at the time. And brought little Ryan by to take a picture. Uh -huh. That's awesome. I mean, what's the chance of that, though, really? <laughs> of course, you know what? You've held and hugged and kissed so many people. Yeah, I was going to say. You're more than presidential candidates. <laughs> I was going to say, there's going to be I'm pictures I'm still not going to be pinball out for mayor of Toronto. Ah, pinball Pinball Clemens. Clemens up here. He, he's got it. All right, Cincinnati going to go with the up-tempo. No huddle, go to the line of scrimmage, try to change their pace here on offense. Second and long. Davila. Underneath, finds his man. Bill Poland. And he gets out nine yards. And that'll be a first down. And we talk, you know, we keep talking about Doug and his career here in Toronto and that. It, it shows the appreciation, Doug, that people here have for the game of football. They love the CFL. They love the NFL. They love college football. They really do. And they've really supported the Argos here the last few years. And now having a college game up here in this atmosphere, they really, they're embracing it. And it's, it's great to see. 
I, I've just enjoyed being around you, you know. It's, uh, it's fun, <laughs> of course. You, know, you come back here, and, and, and all this uh, the adrenaline gets going. Ooh, good shot. Makes you want to play again. That make, Does that make you want to play again? Uh, as, long as, you're on the, <laughs> as long as you're the hammer and not the nail. Delvis with the stick that popped that ball loose. Does look Selick is... Well, he looked like he had a reception. And then... See ya. Oof. Oh, man, that's... A, that's The Haitian sensation making the lift. <laughs> and then looking down. You don't like that. I, I don't like the conquering thing, over standing over your prey type of thing, but I, I like the big game. hit. He gave him a pat. There you go. He Sports came back. He really, yeah, exactly. He yeah, he's going he's gonna to be all right. Cheers. I'm glad I killed you, but get up. That, I'm glad you're okay. <laughs> well, see, that's the way you play football, though. You, you lay a lick on somebody, you, 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 you play hard, you play tough, but then pick them back up off the ground, pat them on the back, and go right. back to the huddle. Mm. He's Maybe that's, down, a quarter, huh? that's a quarterback talking, not a linebacker. Well, he's up. Let's check in with Scott Reese. All right, John, we check in on the number one hoop team in the country, UCLA, at the pit, taking on Oregon. Tawan Porter misses. Chamberlain Iguchi does not. And the Ducks, fresh off their first loss of the year, up four, under four to go, first half. Wow, Oregon trying to pull off the upset there. Oregon got off to a good start this year, had an early win over Georgetown. Out of the shotgun. Davila looks, moves to his left. That ball's tipped and picked off. T-Top goes up for it, tips it, and then, I mean, the tip drill is working for the Broncos because they keep tipping the ball to themselves and coming up with the interceptions. It just seemed like Davila held on to the football a little bit long. There was a player down the field opened up. He goes back. He tries to force it down the middle. Well, once you make the decision, nothing's there, nothing there. I don't see anything. I'm starting to move. Don't throw back into the middle, number one. But number two is make sure you've got an easy throw. Once you leave the pocket, you can throw it away out of bounds. Just don't make the big mistake. That Broncos defense has a little bit of volleyball in them. Absolutely. Forcing another turnover. Well, it's enough to intercept the pass and tip it to yourself. But when you're doing it with a broken hand... Hi, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a couple of times now I've saw it, it, it. Over the course of the season, this team has had a habit of tipping balls to themselves. Brandon West, the lone back. Fake. And Broncos want it all. Going deep. Oh, just just off the fingertips of Herb Martin. Good job defensively by D'Angelo Smith. Got a hand in there. Again, with the play action, the safeties are out of the picture. It's one-on-one, -on -one pure speed by Martin. The ball's got to be up either earlier or out further. Just lay it out there and let him go run it down. Nice recovery by the DB. It just tells you, though, it shows you how the Broncos' offense, their whole mentality, this football team's whole mentality turned out. They were down 24 to nothing and out of this game. Not even close. And about to be scored upon early in the third quarter before getting a turnover. Now they get a second turnover. Again, they want to go deep. And again, pass is intended this time for Ledbetter. Ross was there. It's difficult enough to try and stop that deep ball, but when you have to make adjustments in the secondary, Todd, it makes it even tougher. No question, John. They had a change in the secondary for Cincinnati those last two series. D'Angelo Smith, number six, was playing that right corner. That's because John Bowie, the starter and the Big East Sprint champion, went out with what they're calling a bell ringing. He had a head injury, so they pulled him out for the last two series. But this guy is fast. And talking to the coaches, they say he may be the fastest guy at the NFL Combines. He is the Big East Sprint champion in the 100 and the 200-meter dash. Well, he's going to show some speed indeed. Oh, and a good job by the Broncos to get a first down. Ledbetter picks it up, 11 yards. 
I love it when you need to gain 10 yards and you gain 11. It, it, well, so way, many well, times you see you need to gain 10 and they get 9. Well, most of the time, though, that's dictated because the, the, the secondary, the cover man, is forcing you to squat early. And most routes, they, they, the receivers just don't push it and go the distance they need. Man, how about the step up and the throw in the pockets? Uh, yeah, protection's the key to that. If you can step up and throw and see things vision-wise, it makes it a lot easier. West in the backfield takes a handoff, goes towards the sidelines and cuts it back up and fights his way down to about the 25-yard line before Dominic Ross is there. Yeah, Nine-yard game. Western Michigan took their shot. They've been nickel and diamond, working the ball down the field. They took their shot deep, almost hit it, but what it's done is soften things back up. Now they're back to the ground game and the control passing game. Cincinnati's defensive line. They've, they've allowed themselves to fall into the zone little stretch that the offense offensive line has lured them into. They've got to get back into that penetration in the backfield. Hubert hands the ball off in a wide open Brandon West. And he battles his way down near the five-yard line. That hole opened in a hurry, and West hit it and gained 13 yards. At the line of scrimmage, you're going to see that there's going to be some Cincinnati defensive linemen that get across. The key is for them to get up the field. They're not doing it. West has the vision once you give him that to get there. Look, it, there, there's no blowing off. It's, it's a wall-off mentality right now. And then you read the head of the defensive lineman. If you get the push, you cut backside. West again. And this time, he's going to find the end zone. Touchdown, Broncos. There is a flag. On the opposite side of the field, <laughs> seven yards on the touchdown run. Offside, on the defense. That penalty is declined. Touchdown. You know, Craig James was begging for overtime today. He might get his wish. Yes, he may. <laughs> uh, uh. Again, here's West. Stretch of the defense. Cincinnati's defense, I think Coach Kelly, his first job might be to get a little conditioning on that defensive side of the ball because they're tired right now walking around. Nate Meyer for the extra point. Bangs it through. Western Michigan, a 24 to nothing run. West 18 for 122 running the ball, including that one for the touchdown. We're tied. ESPN2 College Football, the International Bowl, is brought to you by the 99-cent KFC Buffalo Snacker. Get Buffalo for a buck at KFC. Well, I was sitting at home with a bad throat. I could barely talk watching you guys do the Liberty Bowl. I was all upset because it was such a great game. We hadn't had very many good games this year. Well, I got one. You got, you got one. it. 24-point swing, big comeback, even up fourth quarter. The kickoff is going to be inside the five. Whoa, bobbled around. Oh, the Broncos are there quickly. Greg Moore lost the handle on it. It's just not knowing. It's out of sync right now. Bearcats are not quite together. Communications down. And hey, man, in any way you look at it, Western Michigan's on it. You know, it shows you what momentum does and how the psyche of a player is when you can't just catch the kickoff, relax, catch it, and go. You're thinking now. You're a little nervous, apprehensive. Western Michigan, largest deficit they've overcome this season was 12 points against Eastern Michigan. So they were down 24-0 in this game. Well, it's been the comeback bowl season. I mean, uh, Texas Tech was down like 31 versus Minnesota. They were down a whole bunch of them. But it takes character. you got to have the right kind of post on your sidelines to overcome a 24-point deficit. And Bill Cuban said these were his things that were important to him in order to do these things. I agree with that 100%. I'll take character over talent any day of the week. And smart football players don't make mistakes. And you know what? There are a lot of coaches that are coming to this conclusion. You can't have a yard bird in your locker room or you're going to have troubles. Tossed out towards the left sideline. Dominic Goodman, the receiver. Eight yards on the pickup. 
I think Mac Brown is one of the ultimate CEOs of college football, University of Texas. And he, too, is like Cubit and says that character and all of the other things, when you go to school, you know, you're, uh, can you help? And then can you play the game? You know, I think that, that lends to the trust that you need in your players, whether they're off the field or on the field, the way you conduct it on a day-to-day -day basis. You believe in those kids because you trust them. Battle again to the sidelines. Brian Selleck. We're here in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. You're watching the International Bowl. Cincinnati Bearcats against the Western Michigan Broncos. John Saunders, Doug Flutie, Craig James, and Todd Harris here with you. The first bowl game played outside of the United States since 1937. That game was played in Cuba. Got Levent in the backfield. Again, a nice job to fight his way before Duckworth pulls him down 16 yards in the game. Well, this is what we're talking about. It was Auburn against Villanova. 1937 Bacardi Bowl, January 1st, La Tropical Stadium in Havana. Auburn's bowl history began with that game. It was a 7-7 tie. This game marked the first time two United States universities played on foreign soil. And in Cuba, we shouldn't be surprised it was a tie, right? <laughs> oh, big, big run by Butler Benton as he hit the line and quickly went to his left, 24 yards on the game. Paying off just briefly that Cuba game. I wonder if they handed out Cuban cigars to the players in the deal. Only, the back, the only to the winners, but there were no winners, so you get it. Okay, back to the but game. But they had to smoke them before they got on the plane to come back. <laughs> How about Cincinnati coming out with the offensive line and establishing it, again, control at the line of scrimmage and running the football down the field? Answering the call, going back to a little bit of two-back downhill running power football. They did come out with a couple short completion to, to answer that score to answer the 24-0 run this is huge drive started at their own eight but the, the problem for Cincinnati has been turnover good strong running by Butler Benton again Todd so Benton's getting a little more playing time than we expected yeah, initially it was a, a real scary moment because Greg Moore, who was involved in that kickoff fumble, he came off with a severe ankle sprain. It's his left ankle. They're working on it right now. They had him running on the sideline. Couldn't go, so now they've got him on the bench. They're trying to retape it. But Butler Benton, giving the coaches a reason to breathe a sigh of relief because they're starting tailback on the bench now. Benton definitely getting the job done. Well, the, this Cincinnati football team, they've had four different players with 80-plus rushes this season, so there's no one individual back there that they depend on. By committee. And off the Glathar. And Amos with the tackle, three yards of the game. Dabla had that timing down on his passing game in the first quarter and a half. I mean, this is a Cincinnati team that's been scoreless since... 10:23 to go in the second quarter. You know, the key of this drive was a couple quick rhythm passes that I felt like he was still a fraction of a second late on, which early in the game we were right on time. Davila quickly releases it. Benton, whoo, nice job picking up the blocks and fighting down to the 10-yard line, 19 yards on the game. Just some nice play calling here, Craig. It's nice because inside, Doug, that's where all the pressure is. Inside, you're going to see. Well, hello there, darling. <laughs> Where'd that come from? Inside's where the pressure is, so throw it to the outside. Got the old knuckle in the way on the draw. <laughs> Little slip screen action out there. Allow the rush to come. Flip it out there to the back. It's got a couple guys in front of him. Convoy. Great song. Hello, darling. How you been? Convoy. That's a Texas convoy song. Convoy 20. Huh? That's a Texas song. I said Convoy was also a great song. Oh. Convoy. Eight plays, 82 yards on this drive, but again, Cincinnati has had a tendency to turn the ball over a little bit. Mm -hmm. Sack. 
Dabble is knocked down by Davidson. Five yards on the loss. Especially in this situation, you want to protect the ball. You can deal with the sack. You're still in field goal range. But, boy, he's holding that ball in one hand out. Actually, he did tuck it away at the last instant to protect it. And, and Davidson's the guy who had the, the tossed fumble and recovered ball on the last time they were in Cincinnati was in the red zone. Well, the other direction, the other kind of paint. You know, you can't run into There's paint. There's no paint. paint. There's no paint. There's no paint. That's a problem. Just the team names in the end zone, and you heard that the colors weren't exactly right. No, they weren't. In the end zone, where no one was there, I think Davin was just throwing that one away. Western Michigan has four sacks. Yeah, I, my room looks out on the stadium, and I was watching them paint. I'm like, hey, guys, it's supposed to be brown and gold, not white and gold. It, 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 you know, there, a confusion again. Get it out, he Good said. Friend. Get it out. Throw the ball. Get it out. But you know what? When you're confused, you don't know who to get it out to. You know, that's Western Michigan, what they do defensively. Though. They bring people and get in the face of the quarterback. And like, like you said, confused. He doesn't know all the time where the blitz is coming from. Cincinnati has been successful 50% of the time converting these third down plays. Not this time. Derek Stewart was the intended receiver. Davila overshot him. He was covered nicely. Well, because of the long yarded situation there, Western Michigan only brought a four man rush. Sat back in zone, had plenty of coverage and tight coverage. We set up to watch this field goal. Kevin Lavelle, 33 yards. I wonder what it is like for a coach to come in he doesn't have a relationship with these kids yet he immediately has to yell at them sometimes <laughs> get on them sometimes well, ride them sometimes nice kick there and a great job by cincinnati's offense of answering an absolute must call definitely answer the call things haven't been going well 24 straight points for western michigan they put it together on the ground moved it down the field got the field goal to take the lead john that's a great question though you bring up and you pose there because you've got a new coach whereas cuban on his sideline those guys are used to each other they know what they're wanting right here's a new coach that doesn't know these players they're still got stickers on the top of their helmet says you know james and flutie and saunders right so all of a sudden you're trying to motivate them on the sidelines they don't know that your what your words are like and it, you know it's very important it's tell this is a good learning experience situation for kelly for the future well and one of the reasons he's comfortable here is because philosophy is the same he says it's not about the wins and losses I want to win the game, and so really the purpose here was to get these kids in a position to win. So our coaches studied the, 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 the playbook to learn their offense and to learn the way they call things. So we put it on our staff so the, the kids feel comfortable playing and can play fast because it's about winning the game more than putting my style in. We've got plenty of time to do that. As I told our kids, we're going to make this real easy for you, but Monday uh, things will change a little bit. You know, this was just a phenomenal effort by this coaching staff throughout this bowl time period where they split the staff. Half of them stayed at Central Michigan. They win that bowl game. They come over in a van the next morning at 5 a.m. And they're, they're, they're trying to win two bowl games in one season with one staff. Well, you know what it is? It is a learning experience for everybody. But having the ability to come in and coach this football team Prior to next season, learning personalities so important to them. And I think the, the big effort there for this game in particular was to stay with the same terminology, the same system that these kids are used to to give them an opportunity to win this game. Well, Western Michigan, they'll take it at the 20-yard line. A nice job kicking the ball deep, and we'll find out of the Broncos how they'll plan to go down the field. Cincinnati, their offense, combination run and pass to get them down the field. Well, this Bronco offense woke up in the second quarter with their with their trick plays, but since then, it's been very efficient. Short passing game, a little run mixed in. They rushed for a touchdown in the last drive. So they're off and running. They got six minutes on the clock and an opportunity to come back. Cuban at the line of scrimmage. No huddle.
Nice little touch on the ball, trying to get it up and over a defender and drop it in there. The receiver's open, but there's a defender between the quarterback and the receiver. They, John, I, they say you, you said Western Michigan had a good volleyball team. That's yes. they work with them, because their tip drills are outstanding. Yeah, Western Michigan does have a world-class volleyball team normally year to year. Brandon West in the backfield, and right, the way they tip that ball to themselves. Handed off underneath the West, and he's met quickly by Leo Morgan without picking up any yardage. So this is one of those drives right here, you know, it, it, clock running down, five and a half, five minutes, you know, the tempo of getting up the line of scrimmage and moving, because if you don't get it, you certainly are putting a big burden on that defense to stop Cincinnati. Yes. You, you may not be getting the ball back, so you want to convert here. And this shows you how important first down was. The incomplete pass would have been second long. Now it's third and long. Huge play right now for Cubitt out of the shotgun. Cincinnati coming after him. Fired across the middle. A terrific toss to Simmons by Ryan Cubitt. 12 yard gain. What a great job by Simmons coming around the defender back to his quarterback to make a play on the ball because he was not open. But it all started in the backfield. The backfield with the blitz protection and the pickup in the inside by the back. Coming on the inside, number two, West. Getting to the linebacker, opening the passing lane up, and as you said, Simmons coming back. Nice job catching. The ball. Great throw, great catch, great protection. 11 receptions for 154 yards for Simmons. The handoff to West. And he weaves his way for a four-yard gain. I'll tell you what, if they go down the field here and score out of this drive, you're going to look back at that third down conversion as one of the biggest plays of the game. It's execution. You know, everybody has to do their job. Offensive line, back picks up the linebacker on the blitz up the middle. Receiver comes back to the ball. Cubit stays in there. He's patient. And it took all three to make that happen. Fakes the toss. And then comes back on the opposite side to Simmons. And Simmons gains four yards. Don't you have a scouting report on Simmons, Doug? What I'll tell you what. Number on him? He catched, uh, you know, the games that I watched, he was catching, I don't know how many balls on these little underneath route, little underneath route. He struggled in the first quarter, dropped the ball that turned into a touchdown the other way, dropped another one, tipped one up, whatever. But now he's into a groove. 12 catches, 158 yards. He, he probably is going to look back on this game and say, man, I wish I'd started out that way. Career high as well. Well, the Broncos, with four minutes left, are marching, trying to either tie or win this inaugural International Bowl. Broncos break the huddle. Somebody moved up there. The free fans. And a nice job by Cubit to find Ledbetter. There's a flag down on. Eight-yard gain. I think, like Craig said, it's a free play. I think somebody on defense. And, and you know what? Ryan Cubitt's done a heck of a job at the line of scrimmage of working the cadence. Offside. On the defense. That penalty is declined. The result of the play, second down. By delaying his cadence earlier on that third down and ten, he did a heck of a job of slowing it down to let everybody figure out who they were blocking. Right here on this one here, you listen in, and he's just a, he's done a nice job of how he just varies the cadence. That's a little example there. This time, again, throws out to his right, just short of the 45-yard line to Herb Martin. Four yards on the game before Mike Nickens comes up with a tackle. So they're kind of in nickel and diamond them down the nickel field. Nickel right and now. diamond. And that Mar Martin is their big play guy that can go down the field. But he's he had led better on a crosser. He's throwing those underneath routes, moves the chains, first down there on the hitch route. Just consistent football. Eighth play of this drive, handed off to West. And again, he gets up following the blocking. Well, just FYI here, Nate Meyer's longest kick has been 50 yards. So, 
got a ways to go here to get into the field goal range. But that clock is moving now under three minutes. You definitely can't give it back to the opponent. Yeah, your dream for overtime. Even with the timeouts remaining, you're right, they turn it back over, and this thing will be pretty much over. Great toss by Cuban. Finding Simmons before he is cut down. 14-yard game. Cubit just hanging in there tough again, keeping his focus down the field and sticking in the hole. And again, Simmons willing to hang in there and catch the ball and take a shot as well. Getting knocked down. Boy, he gets knocked down a lot, huh? Oh, I'm not so sure that that's not a... That or, looked for marginal late. Yeah. That was borderline late. Broncos now at the 30. Little flinch there on the left side, John. And that, those are momentum killers. False start. Number 56 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Tomorrow at 8 Eastern on ESPN, our college football bowl game coverage continues. Coach Frank Solich and the Ohio Bobcats take on Southern Miss Golden Eagles, led by freshman running back Damian Fletcher. If you haven't had a chance to watch this guy run, he's tremendous. GMAC Bowl tomorrow at 8 Eastern, also available on ESPN HD. Western Michigan with all three timeouts left. Cincinnati has two. The first and 15. Cubit wants to go to the end zone and very nearly picked off. D'Angelo Smith got his hands on the ball but couldn't hang on. Cubit is now just doing an awesome job of, of seeing the game, throwing the ball down to his receivers. He's got the single coverage. You know, and, and his fiance, girlfriend, is he, is he engaged yet officially? Yeah, yeah, I believe it is. an official deal. I hate to hurt him here. Well, oh, you think his fiance living and dying. Living and dying with every play. Yeah, she's got the championship ring on that left hand, so. <laughs> <laughs> she's done, fellas. Cube it again. Standing in the pocket, knows he's going to get hit. Dumps it off short to Brandon West. And West weaves his way to gain about two yards. Right now, they are borderline field goal range. Right now, it would be about a 52-yard, 51-yard field goal attempt. Three to five yards here on this play would be huge, especially if they pick up the first down, obviously. But just any kind of yardage, every yard is important. You know what? They're, they're Whatever, if, if he made this field goal, it would be a bowl record for the International Bowl. <laughs> Every play is a record here today. <laughs> just seem to be listening. <laughs> you can't on, get man. anything past the pony, folks. Here's a look at Nate Meyer, who may be attempting a, close to a 50-yard field goal. If the Broncos don't pick up a first down here. But again, the ball it popped loose. Simmons had it and just popped out. Dominic Ross with the hit. Well, we get the answer to our question here. It's turned into a fourth down situation. And you were wondering whether they were going to try the long field goal attempt or go for it on fourth. And it looks like they're going to kick it. So. Well, it's fourth and 14. One yard attempt. This will be the longest in Nate Meyer's career and timeout. And they try and ice the kicker. I mean, I would think with a minute 26 left in this game that you really don't have a have a choice. No, no. You got a better chance of nailing a, a 51 or two yard field goal than you do going complete and converting a fourth and 14. So I think it's the right move. And you know. They don't have to worry about the wind, Doug. Exactly. We're indoors. Yep. It's good conditions. You could hit this. He's hit a 50-yarder before. The thing is, we could open the roof, see, and then the wind would blow <laughs> off the scoreboard at his back and get a little extra boost going this direction. Well, what a game this has been, though. You, you know, hats off to both ball clubs out here. Cincinnati coming out strong. 
Western Michigan rallying, trying to come back and, in fact, giving themselves a chance to end the ball game. Yeah, see, it's been a, a terrific game that didn't look like it was going to be one early on. 24 nothing for Cincinnati. And the Big East. The Big East on the line right now. They're 4-0 right. in bowl games this year. They're hoping... For this win, it makes them 5-0. That's right. Doug, you that, predicted that, 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 that would happen. A lot of bragging rights involved there for the Big East. A lot yeah. of bragging rights. Yeah. Yeah, we're about to find out, young man. 51 yards. Wow. His 50-yard field goal, which is the longest of his career, came in a hostile territory at Florida State. So this should be nothing. It's up. Got the length. Wide. To the right. Craig was really hoping for the overtime there. It was a great effort. Nice kick. He had the distance. Just pushed it out a little bit to the right. Now Meyer can't believe it himself. It's a good leg underneath this. Missed it by that much. Yep, just not 51 yards. That's a tough poke, man, to try to. You got to catch it clean, and it, it looked, you know, well, obviously he did push it out to the right, so he didn't make solid contact. How about the international ball, though? They come in here. I'm very impressed with the crowd because both schools traveled yes. more than I thought they would. Yes, they did. And and they and they were into the game. I mean, the the, the crowd was into the game. No, I have to give a, a lot of credit to both. Western Michigan University and the University of Cincinnati for, I mean, we stay in the hotel, which is basically here in, in the stadium, attached to the stadium. From my room, you can, you can see the field. And a lot of those Western fans were hanging by the restaurant, looking at the field. Yep. Looking, you know, the atmosphere is great. They were in the lobby, very excited. Benton takes the handoff. Cincinnati will try and grind out this last minute. Three yards on the game. Western Michigan takes their final time out of the game. John, family members. Now there's a this is a shot from from my room now. From left to right, that's Josh, Christopher, and Stephanie. And that's Stephanie's boyfriend. And that's the, that, that, and that, we, we'll take care of him. Can you we'll put take, an, can you an X? Him out there for no, we, got, an X? <laughs> we got the question mark. He's being analyzed. Uh, test. Evaluation. Testing being done. Uh, yeah, te Tess is his name. and uh, Ooh, Uncle Bernie we, we and Uncle the, John on the exactly. test. That's two tough <laughs> characters right there. <laughs> Hey, John, I just want you to know, whatever's on that bill, I oh, build the party platter. Everything yeah. else is on them. If they rent any movies or anything, it's not me. I just want a party platter. <laughs> I, I know where to look for you, too, Tom. That's true. You probably won't be getting up here to get the family members. <laughs> Come back. Should have signed it to Craig's room. Oh. <laughs> But Craig's staying in a closet. That is Absolutely. <laughs> I, was, I was with the mops. Yeah, that's great. My nieces and nephews there. A little distance between the boyfriend and Steph there. I, yeah, that, yeah, that's you know, probably because of what Dad's I said. Watching. That's great. Steph, Dad's watching. Steph, Steph Stephanie, move away more. Get away. <laughs> hey, hey, Leah, <laughs> your daughter and Jenna are wondering, hey, Dad, now see, Stephanie, she's got a boyfriend. How come I can't have one? Because you're not allowed. As a matter of fact, when I get up there, the Steph's rule. in trouble, too. Is that, is that a guideline? No, it's a rule. <laughs> Saunders is the first guy I've ever heard of that's going to homeschool his daughter going to college. <laughs> yeah, I have a daughter that's Sorry, a freshman Leah. in college, all right? <laughs> oh, masters in daddyology. Well, Cincinnati has done a terrific job overcoming a couple of big turnovers, especially Just late in the first half and early in the second half. Just for the record, Navy fumbled in this situation against BC. No, uh, you know, your Boston College team. Davila, the keeper. Western Michigan with no timeouts left. It's a five-yard loss. Be third down. Fellas, it's been a fun season. You know what? Been a blast, Greg. 
Thanks for carrying me. I know I was heavy. Here. I was heavy on those shoulders oh, all you year. Got, once we got you off the Boston College we scene, <laughs> <laughs> you fell right in with us. Oh, shoot. No, it has been a fun year. The three of us in the studio, and we started We started Coach with Kelly. I was coaching Central Michigan, though, at the time. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Against Boston College. How about two bowl victories in one bowl season? Hand off to Benton. For no game, but that'll do it. As Cincinnati is going to win the first ever international bowl. First coach to defeat the same opponent twice in a season while coaching two different schools. <laughs> but, but then again, everything that happened today was a record. It was the first game. <laughs> nice job, boys. Let's check in with Todd Harris. Coach, your first ever Gatorade bath as a Cincinnati Bearcat. Congratulations. What was the difference, especially in the second half? Well, we were able to, you know, do some things and hold it on to the football a little bit better. Uh, we ran the ball uh, and, and showed who we are late in the game. You've got to get tough yardage late, and it was a great football game. We told you it half was going to come down to this, and, and our kids persevered, and it was great to get a win. You know, we, we, we worked real hard to get two bowl games in, and, and our staff did a great job. I, I can't say enough about my staff and preparing two football teams uh, to get two wins. It feels real good. You get two bowl victories. As you look to the future, what did this team show you today that you could build upon for next year? Well, the, we're tough-minded, you know, and we'll come play hard four quarters, and you know, that's what this thing's going to be about. In the Big East, it's a tough conference. You're going to have to play every week, but um, I'm really happy for our seniors and their ability to get a win in their last football game. Your final thoughts on playing the inaugural international ball. I mean, look around. It's a great venue. I think the Big East and the MAC have got to continue to build this. It's a great bowl game. It's great to be in Toronto. It's a great city. I think we'll do more of this. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. John? Todd, thanks a lot. Now you echo Coach Kelly's sentiments. This has been terrific. They've done a great job with this. And Coach Kelly has shown us that the Cincinnati fans have a lot to look forward to. Well, Mark D'Antonio did not leave the Cupboard Bear when he left. So this is a football program with facilities and a campus that is excellent. And I really think that Brian Kelly will go out and he'll recruit and he'll keep some of those kids in the Cincinnati area that are going to Boston College that he's talked about and keep them around. But this is a good team. They've got a chance. They've got a good upside. You know, and he, he made a point yesterday. I sat with him during the luncheon of talking about his assistants and what a great job they did through this bowl season and doing the two-team thing and jumping back over. It's just a great effort by he and his staff. And Western Michigan has a lot to look forward to as well. Bill Cubitt, you've seen what he's done now in a couple of seasons where he's gone back now and he started winning and they've got the right attitude and the mindset. And he says people are walking around campus with their letter jackets on. They've got pride. And so you got the Broncos rolling again, baby. Get your jacket out and go back. You know, building that and doing it with character kids that have a passion about the game, playing smart football. And it's great to see, you know, I'm sure he's got a lot of talent out on that field as well. We, we saw a lot of speed tonight, the big play, ability of these guys with the trick plays. It was fun to watch. It certainly was. It was a terrific inaugural international ball. Cincinnati and the Bearcats get the win over the Western Michigan Broncos. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sport. For Craig James, Doug Flutie, Todd Harris, and the rest of our ESPN crew, I'm John Saunders. So long from Toronto. If you'd like more on today's game, join us on ESPN News for a post-game extra.